And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to GeekWatch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three, four good brothers. Ha 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 ha. We have the living, Wik the living Wikipedia himself, good brother Flutter. We have the, we have the man of a thousand stenalizers, good brother Matty. Yeah. <laughs> we have the we have the man we have the man who will style and profile over every Florida man in the state of Florida. Good brother Shades. Woo! And we and we have them and we have the and we have the one and only the man of a thousand green mists. Good brother Xanatrix. As yeah. you might as you might tell. We j we are we are coming off of the high of all out, which is probably gonna gonna go down as pay per view of the year. For uh, as of right as of right now, it is pay per view of the year. This is yeah, the there, there's no question. All right, mm -hmm. to give those of you at home listening an idea, I have been out of wrestling for over f like five years now. I think is probably yeah. how long it's been. Mm -hmm. Because WWE burned me so bad, I couldn't stand it. However, the night we're recording this. Uh, well, it was uh, September 5th, 2021. Mm -hmm. I am now a wrestling fan again, thanks to all elite wrestling. And obvi obviously, the, obviously, the rest of us in one form or another are all elite. The, the <laughs> monastery, I may as well, I may as well, I may as well um, put up a graphic saying the monastery is all elite. Um, <laughs> yeah. Besides, besides, with the uh, with the amount of people we have in the temple, we probably could, we probably could start our own stable. <laughs> <laughs> we could but, and should. But because of the fact that tomorrow is Labor Day, which means uh, which means a lot of us are not going to be working, um, this was a golden opportunity for me that I that I couldn't pass up because we've tackled we have done over fifty episodes of Geek Watch, which has been which has been which. Since since we retired Monastery Live has been a blessing in disguise because we get to talk about stuff that we never got the chance to talk to with the other shows, and we get to explore things that we haven't. We've explored re we've explored doing our own ha doing our own hacky ass attempts at game design. We've explored writing. We've explo we've explored total roastings of di of directors. We have we have explored we have explored the rise, fall, and resurrection of genres. We've even explored the weebest of weeb shit multiple times. <laughs> but up until this point, we have not done anything on the graps. And tonight, I think that's going to change because we, after celebrating the good for a few hours, we need a chance to laugh at the bad because you got to have these things in perspective. So this week, our, our topic for this episode is what I like to call 30 years of minus five stars. Yeah, yeah, actually, buddy. I'll do you guys a favor. Minus five stars. Much appreciated, Mr. Brian Alvarez. <laughs> now, I, and I specifically ended up setting up a tier maker just for this occasion. And just to just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, um, I'm going to put a link in um, in the council for you guys. So what we are going to be do what we are going to be doing here is Ah good, we're we're working off the same list. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I ha I have in front of me a list of all of, of all of the Worst Match of the Year awards. Originally, it was Worst Work Match of the Year from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And I know some people are going to go, why are you, why are you for late, why are you for late in Dave's magazine? It's a, ve it's a good resource. I'm not picky about how I do my research. And I know some people have a hate boner for Dave Tuna Meltzer. I have no such compunction. Honestly, I find I find the hate to be overblown. It, to be honest, he it, these these awards like any any opinion piece are subjective. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest here: Dave Meltzer has watched a lot of professional wrestling, and I do mean a lot of professional wrestling. No, does he love New Japan? Of course he does. Who wouldn't? Yeah, and let's but, be honest here with ourselves here: most of the matches that he's picked, 
not many people are going to argue about. No, I'm scrolling down this list. No. No, no, not at all. Let's put it this way. The only one you could you could make an argument is beyond the cutoff, which would be Hogan versus Andre at WrestleMania three. Yeah. There are a few there are a few match the worst match of the year entry entry started in nineteen eighty four. So there's only a few that were missing, but I specifically had it that the cutoff point was going to be um nineteen ninety as when we started. Now the now getting the graphics set up was an interesting affair because Shades had the idea of going with one entry for each decade. One from the 90s, ah. one from the 2000s, and one from the 2010s. Yep. Uh, in fact, for you guys here in the, in the, in the uh, prior, in the scarcity, I'm going to actually post the image I created for this one. Yep. Now, for the, for the 2000s, that was, that was a no-brainer. That, no that, that was going to be Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Um, 2010s also a no-brainer. Sting versus Jeff Hardy. Um, but we, but there were, th but first off, he Shades had initially thought of using Heroes of Wrestling um, as, as the as the entry for the 90s. But unfortunately, we're talking about matches, not pay-per-views. So that's disqualified. Though I commented on this yesterday, uh, last night on the tsunami call. The choice of Hogan versus Warrior is serendipitous. As as we are speaking right now, uh, one OS, OSW review, our boys at OSW review mm -hmm. have begun a new uh, a story arc featuring Ultimate Warriors work in WCW. Mm -hmm. one, oh, of the, yeah, one, of the final, one of the final shows for that arc will feature the the infamous Halloween Havoc match. Yep. Oh boy! But there were three that I was thinking of. And I, I gave him I gave him the shades and I had him and I had him pick. The first one was the Tower of Doom match, which we will get to later. Um, the second was, of course, Hulk Hogan versus the Warrior, and the third was the Kennel from Hell match, Al Snow versus the Big Boss Man. Yeah. So here's where I come in to, to explain why I picked what I ended up picking for two reasons. One, the other two matches would have been very hard to create a uh, to add, cre get an image for that I could easily crop out. I mean, even this one here, the ring ropes kind of get in the way, but yeah. it was the best shot I could get. Secondly, and this was the more important reason why I ended up picking Warrior vs. Hogan, is that not only do we pick th uh, one from every decade, but with using the Warrior vs. Hogan, we now have one from, every prom uh, from each pr different promotion. We have one from WCW, one from WWE, and one from TNA. So mm -hmm. it's a nice little consistency there, nice little... Uh, yeah, nice little serendipitous because it's WCW, WWE, and TNA. It makes sense, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I think I need to throw in a, 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 a kind of a uh, disclaimer in this, especially when it comes to my opinion. I've always worked it. I always said that every, I always, every, every chance I get, I do bring it up, especially on... Uh, uh, heavily, heavy opinion pieces, especially on the WrestleCast. My opinion reflects the the wrestler and the work in the ring, not the person outside of the ring, unless you're Hulk Hogan, of course. But that's yeah. another story. He he made he he played himself. Let's put it that way. So whatever I say about the, these matches, again, worker in ring, not worker outside ring. Separate the art from the artist. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Now before now, first off, let me let me switch this over so that we can get the thing pro thing proper. And I and I need to fix the cropping a little bit. So also, it might be a good idea to screen share that with us so we can see the tier list. Yeah. Um. What I'm what I'm going what I'm going to be doing. Um, what I'm going to be doing here is, since I don't, I don't want to do that whole screen screen share and record at the same time. But here is the um, here's the tier, here's the tier maker list. So ah, yeah, there's the problem better. with that. We won't be able to see what you do to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to repeat of what of what happened on the Hangover recording. So, th yeah, so that's fair. So this is the best we've got, but. Let me let me first let me first explain the um, 
the t the tiers. So at the so um the fir the first is an, is an, it, the the one at the, at the bottom we have we are going to be for matches that may have been bad at the time but just come off as a meh nowadays or or t or time has just rendered them ki kind of ish because because things have been worse. Mm -hmm. We're calling this is going to be the Kevin Sullivan tier. Kevin Sullivan, I I don't mean I don't mean to pick on the guy because I actually have a lot of respect for what for what he's a for what he's done. Yeah, but these are these are these are ones that are just that are just kind of eh. I was I was debating between having this the Kevin Sullivan tier or the Bill Watts tier. I decided to go with Kevin Sullivan because Bill Watts had his infamous um opinions about top rope. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. And, and Kevin Sullivan and and uh, and uh, Cowboy uh, Cowboy Bill Watts are interchangeable in this. Though Kevin Sullivan's work, and especially in the first decade in in WCW, at least in the first half of that first decade, is infamous. Rather than Bill Watts is, for lack of a better word, inoffensive. Hmm. For for again, lack of a better word, he has booked. But he has good booked, good wrestling. So is Kevin Sullivan. You could they're interchangeable at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, one step above that are are the are the ones that are just are just as bad as they were at the time. And we're calling this the Dusty Rhodes tier. Once again, no disrespect to old, no disrespect to old Dusty. God God rest his soul. Um, but the Dusty finish is a thing, and it, it and it is one of those things that's going to be a groaner depending on who you ask. Hey, we yeah. uh, you actually saw a, oh, oh, a, a dusty I finish tonight. So I, cor I correct myself. I I'm looking at the, I was looking at this in reverse. The dusty road um tier is going to be for those that are bad. These matches are bad, but in hindsight aren't as offensive because ah, bigger offenders have come so out. move dusty roads down and call Kevin Sullivan up then. Yeah, um, makes sense. It's it was more that it was more that in my initial notes I had I had it from. From least worst to most worst, and it's in the reverse for tier for how tier maker is working, so that that um got me flipped. Um, right. All right. So Dusty Rhodes, Kevin Sullivan, Jim Hurd, Vince Russo. Yeah. The Jim. Here we go. For the for the next one, these are the matches Speaking that up? are just that are just as bad as they were at the time. And we're as advertised. This, yeah. We are and this is going to be the Jim Hurd tier. For those for context, Jim Hurd is the man who let Ric Flair go to the WWF with the, the NWA World's title, the Big Gold, back when Ric Flair actually was able to debut for the WWF. He was also he was also the guy responsible for some of the really really bad ideas in '90s WCW. For and example, he wanted Ric Flair to wear it to get it to shorn his uh, iconic locks. We're nearing and call himself Spartacus. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And um, no. I think my I think my even though Cornette has fallen out of favor over the years, there is one story involving there's two stories involving Jim Hurd that all that always stick with me in terms of the fact that the I think the only person who was able to put up with him is Jim Ross. Um, one one of them is one of them is when Cornette um had a, had a heart had a heart attack and he was told by his doctor that he needed to avoid caffeine caffeine stress and spicy food. Can you avoid caffeine? Yes. Can you avoid spicy food? Yes. And he's like, and stress? No, I work for Jim Hurd. No. Um, <laughs> the other, the other story is that there was one, there was one point in time where he was so, he was so pissed off at Hurd. He, he, he had said, you know what, you know, when I, when I leave this place, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk into his office, fire five shots from a blank pistol, and then say I quit. That'll be my notice. And um, <laughs> I think, I think, I think Bobby Eaton had, had said to him, Corny. With as many people at, as he's pissed off, and as many people that hate him, he may pull a real one out of his drawer and start shooting back. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Eaton, not an idiot. No. Uh, <laughs> but, also, uh, also real quick, actually, since you can't do the screen share, how about I take up take care of it? Hey, go, go there ready, you go. go. There we go. go. Now, also, are we not are we not using that bottom tier? Huh? You left the D tier up. It shouldn't be up on my end. Get rid of that. Yep, there you go. Done and done. Um, and of course, the top are ones that are that were bad for their time and have gotten worse with time. And this, of course, I have I had to be ironic and give it the Vince Russo tier. 
a man who needs <laughs> no introduction, whose booking decisions need no introduction, and who you should not and, be a drink, do a drinking game every time he says bro while cutting the promo. <laughs> and some of his booking decisions have grown worse with age. Yes. So we are so we are starting from 1990, and we're going to cap it off at 2020. Now the first one that we the first one that we have is Sid Vicious versus the Night Stalker. This was I, Clash of the Champions 13 in Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, this? it's my home state. Yeah, of course, yeah, we have to start with a Florida story. Of course, we do. Um, the Night Stalker. Do I need, was to, do I need the... to put? Do, do I need to play Patsy Cline? No, wait a minute. No. That's the wrong show. Wrong show. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Night Stalker was one of the was one of the gimmicks that um, that Brian Clark had. And ah yep 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 yep. To, to be quite to be quite honest, I've seen this match and it's um it's really a dud because it early nineties Sid, early nineties Sid Vicious was ver was um well he he was a he was a tall he was a tall stiff guy who didn't who couldn't move much. There's not the a whole only lot to reason say. No, the only reason it has any significance is because Sid Vicious at the time was a member of the Horsemen mm -hmm. of the Four Horsemen. Uh, this match, I've seen it. it. There are some matches that are going to surprise you on paper and figure, wait, why is it that bad? And you watch, and then some of you watching it, ah, oh, okay, that makes sense. And there are some that are go, oh, wow, that's surprising. But yeah, this one, it's like, okay, that, that kind of makes sense. But it's, again, to use the word, inoffensive. And for that reason, I am putting in the Kevin Sullivan tier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's an argument to me where you could put it uh, put it on in the Dusty Roads category. To be fair, but it, it's uh, Kevin Sullivan. It, it would be like just as bad, or you know, whatever. It, eh. It's not bad enough. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, oh. Jim Hurd is just as bad. Kevin Sullivan not bad enough. Dusty Roads like why was it that bad? Hmm. Yeah, Kevin Sullivan here. Yeah. So you can make an argument. Oh, it's 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 inoffensive, but at the time, one of the horsemen having a dud. It, that, it, it, time dulls the pain, mm -hmm. but at the time, yeah, yeah. Um, next mm -hmm. is Bobby Eaton and PN News versus Terry Taylor and Steve Austin. This was a capture the flag scaffold match at the Great American Bash in Baltimore. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Uber worker he was at the time, had a dud. But here's the thing: capture the flag scaffold. Have you're you seen a scaffold a match? Gimmick match. Not just that; you're gimmicking a gimmick. Yeah. And there's a reason nobody does scaffold matches these days. Too dangerous. Can't work around it. Can't do shit. I mean, AJ mm -hmm. Styles versus Rhino comes to mind as the last significant scaffold match. But and, uh, no, and also it had PN News, which was their way of trying to do the uh, Adam Rocker gimmick that WWE did. Everyone had a fucking job, folks. It's the nineties. Yeah. yeah. And to be and to be honest, this one this one is scaffold matches are are always. I think the only I think the only good scaffold match was um, Midnight Express and Road Wars, and that was because of the heat that you had with the Night of the Skywalkers. It, it, oh. That and not not that and Jim Cornette's infamous knee breaking uh, bump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but because but because of, because of that, well, it would be tempting to put this in the Kevin Sullivan tier because this is the Dusty Rhodes tier. This yes. is <laughs> to no, there's the it, the only way it would get make it to, in, into the Kevin Sullivan tier or even the Jim Hurt tier would be if someone got significantly injured. No one did here. Yeah. This is a dud, but ultimately inoffensive. Now, yeah. next, is, next is one of those that next is one of those that is a, that is an instance of, as you put it earlier, Maddie. Why the fuck is this guy here? Yeah, this is one of those things where you just go, yeah, 1992, Rick R Rude versus Masahiro Chono. If you're a longtime fan, you're tilting your head because with with the, with the benefit of time, you forget things, mm -hmm. or in this case, or in some cases. You wonder, wait a minute, those were those were two Uber workers. Like, well, Rick Rude was an Uber worker and Masahiro Chono was in Japan. Which is full of Uber workers. Yes. So Besides, Ma you, Masahiro Chono in, in especially in the late nineties was the fucking man. 
<laughs> but back then, Masahiro Chono was known as just one of the world's best workers. He got injured and turned into a badass. It, the, the gimmick change was was uh, kind of a force kind of a thing. Like he couldn't work, so he couldn't work. So when you can't to be a technical badass, may as well be a visual looking technical badass. Yeah, it and, makes sense. And this this but, was an, this was add on. This was Halloween Havoc in Philly. Um, yeah. So I'm going to tell you right now to put that in the Jim Hurd category. Mm-hmm. Right off the bat, because here's why it's it, it's earned that distinction. Rick Rude and Chono had a bomb. It happens. No, no, not every match is a winner, but it's a bomb in multiple ex- aspects. And I watched this match. They had uh, a, a New Japan referee and Harley, Harley Race as WCW's uh, uh, special guest ref. They had a coin toss, so there's a toss in ring to say, okay, who's who's getting the ref? And they had a, a DQ finish. And the crowd? You tried to just, do a fuck finish in Philly. <laughs> yeah! And Philly, Philly, this was 92, and they wanted flair. Guess what <laughs> chant popped up? We want for, flair. In the, first fi- in the first five minutes of the match. Yep. To be fair to the gentlemen, they tried, but the crowd was dead. The crowd was dead. And fucked finish in Philly. Flair's gone. This is Jim Hurd booking this. Mm-hmm. And there's a her whole thing. And at the end of the thing, everyone's going home going, what the fuck was that? And I really do feel bad about about um about slagging Rick Rude and this kind of thing because Rick Rude is one of my local boys. He's from St. Paul. Hey, from Robbinsdale, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. By the way, folks, um, Ric Flair without facial hair is fucking creepy, and it, it should really never good. exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never. I um. I will be happy not seeing that again for the rest of my life. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> folks. If if nothing else, Google uh, Google the match just for Ric Flair without a mustache. Mm-hmm. That shit will stay in your mind for weeks. Now. Wait, Next, uh, hold on. You, you said Rick Flair. Do you mean Rick Rude? Rick Rude yeah. without for facial hair. Yeah, you're dude. I'm tired. I don't care. <laughs> I know. I'm just oh. trying to make sure it's clear to everybody else. Yeah, I'm um, gonna make Pachamania somehow, some way, and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next, in, next we um, we jump away from WCW to jump to the WWF because the next one that we have is is um, the Bushwhackers and Man on a Mission. Versus Bam Bam Bigelow, Bastion Booger, and the Head Shrinkers. Now you would think instant Vince Russo, but I've this match. Uh, this match is on the compilation DVD for their Survivor Series matches, uh, or the, like that they have like a pile of like WWE edited uh, full pay per view. So basically, stuff on the network, but on DVD. Coliseum um, shit. Coliseum, not, not even Coliseum. It was WWE DVD, WWE Open Video compilation mm-hmm. video. Like it was like one of those things where they wanted uh, all of WrestleMania, all all of Rumble, all of SummerSlam, and all of Survivor Series, and they realized, oh shit, yeah. Um, this is not Vince Russo territory, though. Uh, this again it falls into the bad, but ultimately harmless in hindsight. You, so but Dusty it's Rose. got Mabel and the freaking Head Shrinkers. No, it's got no Batch and Booger and Mabel. And they dre- and, and the Bushwhackers and poor Bam Bam Bigelow and the Head Shrinkers got sunk down on that level. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna commit a bit of blasphemy here. Um, uh, maybe maybe it's because of the fact that I never saw them as the cheap herders, but I never under I never understood what was the big deal with the Bushwhackers. Me neither. I, I think I've watched one match as the he- sheep herders. They're hard to find, admittedly. Hey, as the sheep herders, hardcore as hell. But this is the Bushwhackers, and I'm with OSW on this one. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, and man on a mission, uh, um, Mabel, <laughs> Ma- fucking fuck Mabel, Mabel, fucking yeah. Mabel, AKA viscera. Uh, How the hell did we help? say more? Yeah. Um, the man was in and out of, of a job with, with the WWE until his death. I'm like, you know what? Fair play to you. You still suck as a worker, pal. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the one, per- the one person in this, the head shrinkers. Well, it's, um, it's, 
it's the it's the one gimmick that I'm pretty sure isn't talked about in the in the um in the at the Johnson family dinner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and Bastion Booger that that was just a case of death by terrible ass gimmicks. Oh Ugh. god, everything about this, Bastion Booger was horrible. The one person I feel bad for in this match is Bam Bam Bigelow because in ni- '90s Bam Bam Bigelow did not suck. No, that this was still this was unfortunately prime Bam Bam. Mm-hmm. He would have his day in a couple a couple about a year or so later when he had his, this uh, surprisingly decent match between uh, him and uh, Lawrence Taylor. But you know, mm-hmm. he had a better. He would have a, have a better a, a second wing a wind uh, in ECW, which. Is a few years away for him at that point. Yep. Now next, because we're, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're we need we need to put him somewhere. Where where did he belong? Um, I I would I put. I'm him thinking in, Dusty I, Rhodes. Yeah, that's where I got him in. Yeah, Dusty Rhodes. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so next, so mm-hmm. so is well, actually mm-hmm. I think this next one should be in Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not done picking on Survivor Series because yep. next we have the San Antonio one. We have one in San Antonio, um, and this this was the Royal Court, which was made of cheesy Jerry Lawler, queasy and sleazy. Oh, like, so like, it fits ultimately. Uh, like, funnily enough, yep. Against Clowns R Us, Dink the Clown. Oh, who was played? Who was who was played by Claude Giraud? So, doink the yeah, Doink the Clown, the original, Pink the Clown. And wink the clown. So basically, it's Lawler and Doink, and a few and uh, six uh, little people, mm-hmm. vertically challenged gentlemen. Yeah, this one, uh, this this one is a is a case of it's it's bad, but um, the only the only two the only two workers of note in this kind of thing we're gonna be we're going to be um. Are going to be Doink and Jerry Lawler, but I think bo- I think both of them would rather not think about this match. Yeah, this, but it's still Kevin Sullivan for me because oh, it's bad. Not as oh, yeah. bad as what you would th- as you would think, as it's again, it's it's harmless. But considering the gentleman in there, it is still a rather infamous match in wrestling lore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now, that's why it, it it doesn't escape. It does not escape the Kevin Sullivan tier. Now the next one, I believe, is the only entry from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Good luck finding this fucking thing, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, this was at Battle Seven in Tokyo, Japan, which is in which is in the January fourth slot. That's so, currently, yeah. That's currently occupied by Wrestle Kingdom. Um, so again, if you think Wrestle Kingdom, you think the big blow off uh, evening. That's what it is. January four is that traditional slot. So. Makes it even makes you scratch your head. Okay, who would how how this thing have a bomb? Um, you can't Google Tony Palmora. Yeah, it's a case of who the fuck is he, and why the why the fuck was this? Why the fuck was in the this in the January fourth slot? Because I I'd like to point out that uh, what what Maddie just said is so so correct that the first thing that shows up for me when I try to search Tony Palmora is Pittsburgh Steelers football player Troy Palomalu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the internet goes, who the fuck is this guy? Because because of that, unfortunately, I have to put this in the Kevin Sullivan tier because it's a case, it's a case of Sting versus an absolute nobody. I don't know. Maybe he was a young lion back. You know in the day. what? In, in fairness, I don't know who. There's no right. There's not, not a whole lot of records, which leads me to believe New Japan tried to sweep this one under the rug, somewhat yeah. successfully. The only way this this is it, you get a head tilter is Sting mm-hmm. had a bad match. Which hold on, I'm I'm looking at the uh, at the the Battle Seven lineup now. Um, it's, Good idea. I should probably look at that it's, too. It's it's a different name on the lineup there. It's Tony Palmore instead of Palmora. Oh, what? Is it a misspelling? <laughs> a I mean, singles just... match semifinals of the final countdown BVD tournament. 
Yeah. Okay, I he's a he's a parent. Right right out. Out. Yeah. He's a kickboxer. Actually, I've got an image so, of the guy. So, would you would you say that this is a classic case of Enochiism? Yes. Yeah, because Enoki defeated the in the middle of that thing. Well, I'm looking at that card. I'm like, okay. There's a part of me that that wonders how the fuck did you stink it up? Do you stink it up? But I'm like, it's a semifinal. It's not a, it, It's not as important as the final. When you face Antonio and Noki, you kind of forget what the what the road was. Yeah, like, there's an image so, of uh, Tony Palmore. Mm -hmm. Just what? It's still somebody nobody knows who he is. Yeah, for those of you unaware, Enochiism is a bit is a bit of a thing that Antonio Enoki was notorious for when he was booking an, um, New Japan Pro Wrestling. This was he, oh my god! Where, this this I'm come from a Kamalesa, Ohio. <laughs> he was notorious for this idea of try of trying to of trying to bring in combat sports athletes from other disciplines into this wrestling. is early 2000s new japan by the way where he had the book uh we had even more of the book oh yeah uh, no he thought mma was the future while he was not wrong the way he tried to approach it with new japan almost put new japan out of goddamn business so yeah. that's the short short version. That, yeah if it wasn't for tanahashi basically bringing the company like back from near death yeah but this yeah, is, this card. I'm looking at this card. I'm like, this I mean, is not a bad Hawk looking card. Sting, or Hawk and Scott Norton, a right? Steiner Bros versus Hase and Muto, Keiji Muto. They had uh, the Great Kabuki. They had Hiroshi Tenzon versus Manabu Nakanishi. Yeah, this card is actually really, really good. And and the main event. And, and God, that main event. Mm -hmm. Otani versus El Samurai, <laughs> yeah. Oh no, oh, no, no! Hashimoto versus Kensei Sasaki for the IWGP Heavyweight Title. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's a. It, I mean, and the 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 semi main was the IGP uh, IWGP uh, Tag Team Championship. So it's like, oh, what the what the hell? This card what is great. Fuck? How do you get such a such a stinker that it's that it's a uh, it's considered the biggest stinker of the year? What in 1995, fuck? no less. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Think of I, any I, other matches I, that should go I, here, Matty? I'm fairly certain the match, the matches available on New Japan World. As soon as I uh, remind me to watch Battle Seven when I once I renew uh, renew it, because uh, DM me, yeah. DM me to re DM me a reminder when you do because because um it because if if it if it comes to that. Um, I may, we may, we may try and make that into a, into a watch party just so we can see, oh, just so we can see that match for ourselves. Oh God, <laughs> Monk, we, we'll be, we'll be hyped up by the entire card. We'll get to that match and go, what the fuck? Yeah. It'll be a what the fuck moment. It'll be like, it'll be I... like, <laughs> look, <sighs> let me, let me put it this way for, for everybody. If you think modern day Brock Lesnar booking is bad, you should have seen his New Japan bookings in the two in. Oh, in Kim first. Just. I feel bad for Kim Justice because he had a <laughs> great video displaying Le that. Lesnar's New Japan booking. Oh, oh, you have no idea how correct the book is. Well, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I'm match. laughing so hard, Maddie. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. Then the next one, oh boy, now we're now we're getting back into the shit. Now we're getting oh back God. into the oh, WCW. Oh, oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present to you what I call Disaster Peace Theater. Yes. Uncensored, Tupelo, Mississippi, March 24th, 1996. The infamous the Tower, Tower of, of Doom. Doom. Hulk Hogan and, Count Hogan and Randy Savage versus Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Meng, The Barbarian, Lex Luger, Kevin Sullivan, Z Gangsta, aka 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 um Debo, Zeus, and the Ultimate Solution, who which is a case which of, was, who the fuck is? By the way, the he was I believe this is the guy that played Bane in in the uh, in Batman and Robin movie. Yes, also, that's the reason they were able to film um a Dungeon of Doom promo in Gotham. 
I'm not even going to try to attempt to make justice on this one as far as uh, the rules of this match. <laughs> Nobody OSW fucking did the, knew. Folks, OSW did uh, the WCW arc, the, the, the uh, Dungeon Doom arc after WrestleMania X7. They, um, they, even they had trouble with it and they did do better justice than we ever could as far as the rules and how this fucking shit show helped. Especially I since think I know I, what tier this is going in. This is Vince Russo territory. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is undisputed yeah. Yeah, King oh, yeah. of the Bollocks. Mm -hmm. oh. That was just what the fuck. <laughs> Badly just, lit. The, 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 the tower itself was like rain with a bunch of cages, so it's rickety bockety as shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's at the end of the cage. arena and poorly lit, so no one could see the fucking thing. It, it's, it's, it's three cages. And the middle one has two rooms. It's two rings. It's, it's two, two rings. It's one of those watch OSW because I'm not going to tell you to watch it on the network because fuck Peacock mm -hmm. for yeah. my American brother, out, the brothers out there. How do you waste Haku on this? This is WCW. Yeah, this is they, they WCW. found a way to waste a lot You know that of was things. their tagline for a little while too. <laughs> Oh, uh, but ne but we're not we're not done picking on WCW because oh, next oh in God. round two fight. Next is Cunt Hogan versus Roddy Piper Super Brawl in Daly City, California. That this Super is a Brawl case. Uh, th yeah, this is what we would call Hulk Hogan trying to like himself look good even after he had finally looked good again. Yeah, this, this is his... Hogan trying to be. Ho this is Hollywood Hogan, mm -hmm. by the way. This is NWO Hogan, just is... trying to get his wins back, and Piper not giving a fuck. Piper, d Piper could not ha could not have given two could not have given two shits at all, and there was, there was also the fact that both that both of them were sucking wind so sucking wind so hard they made everybody else pass out from oxygen deprivation. Thank, you. much appreciated, James it'll, E. Cornett. It, mm -hmm. It'll it'll uh. It'll also remind you of all of the uh, Macho Man breeding uh, compilations of how much. Oh, yeah. But, I, but when it comes when it comes to this when it comes to this whole thing of 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 um of Hogan trying to get his wins back, he was entertaining the idea of bringing in Yokozuna. The only reason it didn't happen was because Yokozuna was so ballooned out of his ass in '97 that no athletic commission would let it would let it slide. And uh, uh, Eric, also Eric Bischoff learned his lesson with the Loch Ness monster. Yeah, the stink, the stink, one of the stinkiest wrestlers of all time. Ugh. Again, watch the watch OSW. They do him justice too. You know, a lot of people would think this is Russo, Russo tier. No, this is. I'm thinking this is Jim Hurd tier. This is Jim Hurd yeah. tier, just yeah, as it's, bad. It's as bad, but not somehow got worse with time no no the third one of the cunt hogan trilogy though john put that in vince russo tier right now <laughs> hulk hogan yes, versus the warrior time hulk hogan versus the warrior halloween havoc las vegas october 25th there is a oh. reason i made this part of the, the splash screen for this one because oh, this it is, is <laughs> so bad. Wasn't this the match it's just that terrible. Caused, yeah, wasn't this the match that caused Halloween Havoc to cut early from pay per view time? Yeah, yeah. This, had to, yeah this, to, this was garbage. This, this was, was it it is garbage the, because, uh, because Hogan didn't want to lose to Warrior, and Warrior was in his own goddamn head. Mm -hmm. Yes, infamously over in his goddamn head. This was a match where he refused to bump, and then Hogan, well. Hogan tried to do a, a magic paper flash thing, thing as a fucked finish. I don't care. Keep that burp in. This put this put simply. Watch the spot, and you yes. know why it's in Vince Russo tier. That yes. one spot puts it in Vince Russo tier. This is again year three of Hogan. A uh, Hogan trying to get his wins back, mm -hmm. and this was ninety eight. Yeah, you know what else I, I happened in ninety eight? Austin versus McMahon, Austin versus Taker, the the WWF. 
happened. The, the Attitude Era started this year, and this was WCW's response. Uh, I think we know why this, why the WWF ended up winning. But that does not mean that the WWF was safe. Because no. you thought we're not done with the Russo tier. I'm willing to call it now. Because oh, I would, no. I, I'm just going to put this in here right now. From not, the worst, the worst winners from 1999 all the way up until 2005 are all the Fed. Yeah. One I, final yeah. note on Hogan Warrior. OSW, we salute you. Mm. <laughs> You're going to watch that shit show and make it funnier than, than hell. I'd, yeah, I'd like to actually say for everybody out there, um, Hogan Warrior is not just, like, the worst of 1998. It's commonly considered probably one of the worst matches ever. Yes, yeah. because it's, of that it's... spot. Yeah. yeah. Though, our next... Our next entry is certainly up there in that category as well. Oh, oh God! God. <laughs> this is the year I started watching wrestling. And, oh, did I pick a fun year. 1999, no. Unforgiven, in Charlotte, North Carolina, September 26th. Al Snow versus the Big Boss <sighs> Man. The uh, Kettle from Hell match. Hello, oh, hello, man. Russo dear. How are you? Yeah, this is, go, this, is not e this is not even a contest. So Why? Uh, let me give let me give a little bet. Let me give a little background on this one. Yeah. So, uh, so um, like I said, we have the Big Boss Man and Al Snow. Al, Al Snow. Snow. Al Snow. Al Snow. And um, the boss man was in full scumbag mode. Like oh, this was, this was, yeah. this was around the same time that he did that he did the prayer the prayer to Paul White's Paul White's dad to get maximum heel heat after a ten bell salute for his dad. Yo, this is this this is the year where he tried to drag the coffin and and Big Show wrote it. Mm. <laughs> um, I see more that. I so. see that. Monk, if you don't mind, because I was this was this is something that's still burned into my memory. May I set the scene? Go this right, go right action. ahead. But you have, I think you have to bring up Pepper Steak. Oh <laughs> this, yeah, this match, is, up. this match type is garbage. This match oh, type no, shouldn't exist. Uh, Zan, trust me, we all agree. Let me set the scene. Let's set. Oh, let's let's go ahead, Shades. Here. Go ahead, Shades. So. Al Snow at the time had this cute little, I like, was a Chihuahua, I think it was at the time, yeah. named Pepper. Yeah, it's a Chihuahua. It was a cute little Chihuahua named Pepper, and he was bringing it to the ring, almost replacing Ed at one point, but that kind of has ten. So Boss Man, it, one, it, it did not work. It, no, did, it did not work. work. And it gets worse when Boss Man ends up kidnapping cute little Pepper, and after several weeks of Al Snow chasing him down to try to get the dog back, Boss Man invites him over to a hotel to basically make amends and try to s s settle the issue. Anyone getting and Carmen Scott Ketterman flashbacks? You should. Yeah, because Boss Man, as a symbol of uh, generosity, offers him a meal. Only to reveal that it's actually pepper. A pepper steak, yes. Mm -hmm. A pepper yeah. steak. Yeah, for those wondering, um, no uh, no animals were actually harmed in the, in the thing, I would assume, because otherwise uh, the Fed would be <laughs> fucked. Mm. Oh, yeah, the ASPCA and PETA would actually come together to fuck them over on that one. I think it would <laughs> actually, at that point, be the USDA telling them that that dog wasn't approved for meal. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> in Al Snow's, as Al Snow's attempt to act, get revenge, he, he challenged Boss Man to the Kettle from Hell match. The idea was it would be in the ring, then it would be surrounded by a steel cage. Then that would be surrounded by the Hell in the Cell. In between those two cages, there were supposed to be a pack of rabid Rottweilers that were going to attack you if you got close. They fucked. They peed. They shat. <laughs> what they didn't do was go after the go after the wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Which honestly is actually the better idea in the long run. I will say, while this this is terrible and only gets worse as time goes on, it's a good thing the Rottweilers didn't attack the wrestlers because if they had. That that's that is not a uh, an injury you're going to kayfabe away. No, no. Uh, I, I get the feeling what would have happened was they would have just scared them off, like it, they would have chased them down. But they had handlers, so they would have, the handlers would have kept them from actually attacking. 
But yeah. still, it didn't even matter because the dogs didn't even do any fucking thing. They just didn't. No, nope. they, did they, they did do a fucking thing. Excuse me. <laughs> no, you know, no, 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 no. Fair. Uh, this, 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 this is to, court, to quote Carlin, there were a bunch of dogs. Yes. And they fucked. Oh, oh indeed, indeed they, they did. did. Indeed they did. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when's the good match part come in? But oh, doesn't? Russo tier. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and it doesn't get any better from here, folks. Oh, oh God. Yes. Oh, oh, no. Glory. No. <laughs> yep. King of the uh, Ring in Boston, Massachusetts. Pat Patterson versus Gerald Briscoe. The hardcore evening gown match. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and plop that right there. I already did yeah, that. Yeah, so that. Without a doubt. Also... Pat Patterson is one of the few people on earth can, can, that can claim to have a Wrestling Observer Match of the Year award and a worse Match of the Year award. Now, here's the thing. We, we, you say, you know, it's funny we say both of these are Russo tier. These were the years Russo was booking. Yep. Yeah, I believe Russo was about to leave. I, okay, so I, I, I have to... I have to read this excerpt from the professional wrestling match types of... Uh, article on wikipedia i do <laughs> evening yeah. gown match an evening it gown is. match is usually usually contested by two female competitors the victor of the match is the wrestler who removes the evening gown off of her opponent however in the evening gown, ma evening gown match book for wrestlemania 20 in 2004 all four women in the match stripped to their undergarments before wrestling started the match then proceeded as a normal playboy match. evening gown match by the yeah. way for the, for, the, for the record we want to put yeah. that as playboy so the idea was let's just wrestle let's not have them have ladies wrestle in their skimpies yeah it was as 2004 they we, we were starting to know better but not yet mm -hmm. another example of this type of match is the king of the ring 2000 pay-per-view pat patterson versus gerald briscoe two elderly male former wrestlers had a, match of this kind, had a match of this kind. Pure, refined horror, even when put in context. Shades? Yeah. Shades? No, I bet Pat Patterson Shades. had a field day with this one. Oh, I yeah. probably had some fun going in drag, I'm sure, but it's... Goggles do nothing, please. Yeah. <laughs> I will That's all the we need to put. They do nothing! My eyes, the goggles do nothing! That, that's all you need, folks. That, yeah. that we don't have to go deeper than that. No. Do not watch no. this match if you value your sanity. Now, but, remember, but, yeah. remember that this is also a hardcore match, meaning that there's no real uh, winning other than stripping off the evening gown. Uh, it was... Uh, no, let's just... One. Let's put... Not that there's anything wrong with drag, because I, I am no. interested in no, doing no, no, that no. one day. But I don't want to see elderly gentlemen in laundry. No, no nobody no, cares. No one does. <laughs> To each their king. To each their king. To each their king. Right. Yeah. Now, let's let's get on to something that's a little less um, eye gouging. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, this is bad for. Uh... <laughs> okay. So th oh. for this we have Unforgiven in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the Brothers of Destruction, Undertaker and Kane, versus Chronic. Chronic. Uh, Brian Adams and Brian Clark. Yep. Uh, with uh, Stevie Rick. Richards ringside. Uh, this was SmackDown at, 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 at near the end of the uh, invasion, of the ill-fated invasion angle. Mm -hmm. And you know things are bad with Undertaker has your ass fired or slash sent to developmental post. Yeah, yeah. Cr chronic stunk up wrestling in the states, and then they would go to Japan and get even worse. They were. This is the reason why nobody respects the power plant as a wrestling school. Yeah. They had a, they had a few people in there and they helped they definitely helped Triple H and Big Show eventually, but that's about it. There's forever for when it, when that's when those are your best pickings and um, Goldberg and Goldberg, but let's that that I don't think that, that counts. That's um that is <laughs> I'm not. I'm not entirely sure if I would call if I would call Goldberg a good worker. <laughs> no, but he came out of the power plant. We got it. It's again. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, I actually. It's it's. There's going to be people arguing semantics. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. But actually, I mean, the, the big reason, the big reason, because of because of that 
as tempting as it would be to put this in Vince Russo tier, I am I'm going to put this in Jim Hurd tier. No, yes. this is Jim Hurd. It's just as yeah. bad. And actually, it's funny. Uh, Brian and Vinny are actually going through uh, the invasion era, mm -hmm. the invasion angle, and they covered this match. And you could literally hear. They say you could hear Undertaker move. Fuck. When Undertaker and breaks kayfabe, you fucked up in the middle of a match. Yep. Yeah, the most infamous call that the most infamous moment of this is him yelling out as loud as possible, "Feed!" <laughs> like, all right. So here, here's Matt, what we have. Matty, as, as you were about to say about mm -hmm. breaking kayfabe in the middle of a match. Yep. Oh. No, I was saying that when you have Undertaker breaking kayfabe, you fucked up. Now, I have a list of the graduates per Pro Wrestling Fandom Wiki. There, there's a few names actually. You know what? They didn't fuck up all that hard. Obviously, you bring up Goldberg; he was probably the most infamous one. <laughs> Giant, Sean O'Hare, Shane Helms, John Gonzalez, meh, Mark and J Jindrak, Chris Canyon, who better? Lash LaRue, uh, Steve Mongo, McMichael, Ernest Miller, Shannon Moore, Kevin Nash. I shrug at that one. I don't know if that counts or not. Diamond Dallas Page, Chuck Palumbo, the Renegade. Yes, that rank is. Renegade. Oh, uh. Shark Boy, Shark Boy, Alex Wright, Das Wunderkind, Bob Sapp, Johnny the Wool, uh, Johnny the Bull, the Bull, excuse me, The Wall, uh, Sick Boy. Stacy Keebler, though, uh, if you want to count that, sure. Charmel, we'll get to her later. <laughs> Queen Deborah, McMichael, eh. Tori Wilson, WWE Hall of Famer for us. Where CW Anderson is in there as well. David Flair, eh. And uh, one Daphne Unger, may she rest in peace. Oh, yes. Yeah, I just heard about that. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, what you what you've read is unfortunately true. And they had, uh, of course, they had Sarge, but they have Paul Orndorff, their Dream Bruce, Bobby Eaton, mm -hmm. Buzz Stern. Uh, I thought I, you would. I thought, uh, huh? Norman Smiley was not a trainer in there. Oh, there you go. Huh. Anyway, you would think that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but um. Like I said, um, like I said, this is a this is a case of you have two good workers who had to work with two guy with two guys who couldn't um, work all that well. The male equivalent of stick with tits. They were hired for their look. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, we'll get to those sticks later, folks. Don't worry. Do not worry your sad little head. Yeah. Um. Next, we go we go to 2002, where we had where we this was a rare non pay per view entry. Um, Monday yeah. Night Raw. Uh, in I Philly. remember watching this match live in front of my eyes on the TV. Go ahead. And we have this was in Philly on July seventh. Um, Bradshaw and Trish Stratus. There's an odd couple if I ever heard one. Yep. Yeah. Versus Chris no versus Chris Nowinski and Jackie Gata. Folks, uh, we're going to put this in Kevin Sullivan tier because yes, there was a lot of damage, but. Again, time, time, and uh, the rest of the matches on the list pretty much forgive it. This, I have to say that this is a case of Murphy's Law in full effect. Ah. Jackie Gata was green as ga grass. Nowitzki was was getting better, and nothing clicked. This was, if you remember, if you see the match, you get that sense of whatever they had, whatever ideas they might have had. They they were thrown out the window for whatever reason, and Murphy's Law hit bad. Because Bradshaw is a good worker, Trish Stratus would become a was good worker, getting but better. Was... But this was at the beginning of, of her run of okay, she wants to wrestle more and more and more. Mm -hmm. She was getting good in, in late two thousand one and two thousand two. You could tell there was some still some lingering greenness in there. She would get better and better and better as along. This is not this is nothing against. Either one of the people in this, in this, by the way, this is just Murphy's Law. Um, and and um, 
ja and ja and um, Jackie Ga Jackie Gata. Um, not there's not a whole there's not a whole lot really to really to <coughs> really to say really to say about her. She was she was what she was one of the early tough enough graduates. She was she was one of the tough enough winners, mm -hmm. and uh, again green as grass. And she didn't have much as far as wrestling. She didn't do much. This match is more than likely why she didn't do much, <laughs> albeit. And Christopher Nowinski didn't didn't do too much damage. The one thing of note would be, a few months later, participating in Scott Steiner's debut at oh, Survivor we'll Series 2002. Yeah, I was trying to segue into this next one. By the way, <laughs> I was I was trying to work the segue here. So because <laughs> there is. There is of no, and Bradshaw would be Bradshaw. No, mm -hmm. no shock here. So, um, Nowinski would, would would play a better role in wrestling outside of wrestling. So, yeah, one of the few working with with CTE and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the co-founder of the Boston University CTE Center. Um, That's the man. So, but next we're going back. We're going to the royal. We're going to the Royal Rumble. Did the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Did I say that Speaking out loud? Speaking of the debuting Scott Steiner. <laughs> yep. This was 2003 Ripple H versus Scott Steiner. This is full on Terra. Uh, this was full on. Uh, Reign of Terror. Was Reign of Terror Triple H. Yeah, this was so, right in the middle of the infamous Reign of Terror where he pretty much yep. dominated the main event scene for several years, in fact. And Scott years. Steiner was suplex, suplex, and that's it. And Triple H uh, did not give a fuck. This was yeah. a bomb, and they bombed again later, but not as hard as this. Yeah, the Scott Steiner in WWE was it was very, was very much a dud. Um, that it was. Steiner, he did, they booked him as a face, which, which makes which, no, which you which know made Scott's, no goddamn sense. His best work is always as a heel, and eventually they, they turn him heel, but it was obviously too late by then. And Steiner, you know, his reputation as, as a hothead followed him to the Fed. Mm -hmm. He would he would do much better in, in TN of A. Yeah. This <laughs> one, um, you, yeah, this is just as bad. This is Jim Hurd. Mm -hmm. This is absolute Jim Hurd here. Oh, yeah. You know this. This is bad. This is pretty much him. And after his, uh, after the no way out did not uh, improve or improve as as much, uh, that was the end of his main event push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So next is another is another entry for from Unforgiven. This oh, was this was the one in Portland in two thousand four, and here and this one we have Tyson Tomko versus Stevie Richards. Now, for those wondering how the fuck that made the uh, the, the 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 card, uh, that made the card. This was a raw branded pay per view. Mm -hmm. uh, can, so can there, I, there uh, a... Go ahead. I I regretted something in tw 2004, and now looking back on it, I'm glad that I didn't get to go. One of my friends actually had tickets to this PPV. At the uh, oh. uh, this is 2004. This is Triple H taking his belt back from Randy Orton. And this is this is also, you know, I'm, this is me in as a teenager. I couldn't go. I, di I didn't have the ability to go because I, frankly, I Oh, I didn't believe want me. To, want to uh, want to um, go when I didn't have any money to say buy merch or anything as well. Ah. My, my friend had gotten tickets, and uh, and he and he went with his girlfriend instead. She later dumped him because he was more into wrestling than her. <clears throat> I mean, teenagers, am I right? Uh, <laughs> they scared the living shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but uh, I'm going to be honest. Looking back on the history of wrestling, I'm I'm kind of glad I didn't go. Now, <laughs> this was not exactly well reviewed. Uh, though they obviously Triple H were gaining the title, but there was on the card. It looks like there were some matches that that would have been great. Chris Jericho versus Christian for the vacant IC title that comes to mind. Mm, I've but, seen that uh, match. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you, know, you could have literally traded. Uh, 
this is a case of trade Tomko and Steven Richards with Maven and Rodney Mack. You might have a, you, they, they might have escaped the fate of, of, of the Observer Awards worst. This really, it's what it, this is Dusty Rhodes. This is it's a boring match. Yeah. It's a match. This it's, is, and this here's is the thing. Here. And here's the thing. Tomko was technically double booked in this in this show because yeah because not, not even minutes before he was ringside for the women's title match. Yeah. What dare we button this again? Uh, dusty. Dusty. Yeah. This is going. In, this is going in dusty. Be- um. Tomko was Tomko was not terrible, but he just had. I consider t- I consider Tomko to be in to be in that same area as um as as two thousands um Blue Justice, you know a good a ah, good worker who just, yeah a, a good worker who just get who just got really bad luck when it came to booking. Yeah, Tomko's good, and but he was miscast a lot of the time or or used as more as a heavy than an actual wrestler. You could see his yeah. work outside. He was he was good, a good hand, and with the right worker and the right circumstance, could knock the house down. But it was never. But he was oh. booked as a heavy, intelligently enough. But it was a case, of, and this match probably proved it to to the powers that be at the time. So look, looking at the card for this Unforgiven, I see I see a couple matches that I would have loved to have seen in person, but most of them, I could. It's they, they they would have impressed me the same whether I'd been there in person or whether this I is the kind of card where yeah you could have been yeah that would have been great to see in, in person but this was a, in, endemic of one of the uh, of side effects of the of the uh, brand split uh, mm-hmm. where there you, there's some cards where everyone everything can click and everything could work out and then you have matches where you you could go into filler match city mm-hmm. it looks like a couple of those matches here were like that too yeah. This was so, a B pay per view as well, so that didn't help matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now ne- next, it's two thousand five, <laughs> and this w- this one is is we're back at Survivor. We're back at Survivor Series. <laughs> oh, god, oh god! Eric Bischoff <laughs> versus Teddy Long. This this okay. Play this is big four. You got to put it since it's it's big four. It's gonna be on a card. You got to put it on Kevin Sullivan, but I can't put it at higher than that. No, this is this was this was literally they're they're feeding the Raw versus SmackDown uh, feud, and they're feeding it as much as they could, folks. Yeah. This this is harmless filler. Mm-hmm. And 2005, to be fair, was a good year for wrestling as far as just the in-ring work. So it I was, get the feeling yeah. that this this probably was what, when Meltzer and Alvarez looked at it. It's like, you know what? It's process of elimination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the high profile of the of the of the pay per view and the bit one of the big four pay per view was still prevalent. So yeah. Eh. And because, because I, I have a memory of this shit, by the way. So yeah, yeah the, the rest of this is like, oh yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Each year we step forward, I feel a little bit more regretful that we're doing this. <laughs> hey, that's why I'm happy to do. That's why that makes me happy to do it. So I'm like at this point, let's just make fun of wrestling. It's, yeah. it's silly bollocks. <laughs> that's all it is. I'm, I'm. I'm Doku tonight. I have I have liquor in hand. <laughs> wow! I think we fi- we finally found something that's breaking down Zan. I think mm-hmm. uh, wow, this is a first. Yeah. So <laughs> ne- next, we we leave. We end our we end our WWE streak, and we go and we go st- and we go straight to total nonstop action wrestling. TNA. Uh, and we start so with, with one of its worst matches ever. Impact, Orlando, Florida, October 26, 2006. The Reverse Battle Royale, Phase 1 of the Fight for the Right Tournament. Mhm. And let me let me load let me load this up so I can see so I can see. First off, the Fight for the the Fight for the Right Tournament was 
a real was a case of really overcomplicated booking. <laughs> this yeah. is yeah. this is this is Russo going nuts. Yeah. So But is this here, Russo tier bad? Uh, ah. let, let's go let's go over who let's go over who was let's go over who was in who was in the who was in the thing because well first off we we need to um, would one of you kindly explain what the fuck a reverse battle royal is before we get into the... Mind if I, mind if I do so? Go sure. ahead, Flutter. So a reverse battle royal is what happens... So so what happens in that match? Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, let, 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 me, let me oversimplify it. Bunch of mana start outside. The, the, the thing is to get it back and to get to be the first eight or so in the ring. Over yeah. the top rope, feet touch the ring, kind of stuff. After that, it becomes an actual battle royal, and uh, you know the first, the last two, they fight to a f finish in a, in a ring. Yeah, you, you, you but that, that's be oversimplifying it. Flutter, um, complicated. Make it really so complicated. Oh yeah. god. <laughs> yeah, you first get everybody starts outside the ring. You gotta be. You gotta try and get in the ring. And then you got to try and throw everybody else but you out of the ring, and this was to determine the seating order for the for the next phase, which was a single elimination tournament. Jim Hurd category, by the way, it's just as bad, not uh, as not worse. Oh yeah. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, now the people who were involved in this: Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal, Eric Young, Low Key, Kazarian, Raven, Brother Runt, um. Also known as Little Spike Dudley, Brother Devon, Kip James, aka a a a Billy Gunn, yep. James Storm, Christian Cage, Ron the Truth Killings, Chris Sabin, Christopher Daniels, Robert Rude, AJ Styles, Lance Hoyt, and Abyss, who won the thing. So the idea was if the first eight in this are become members of the tournament at that point. Mm hmm. And so that was Abyss, Lance Hoyt, Ron Killings, Chris Sabin, Christopher Daniels, Robert Root, and AJ Styles. The uh, last eight were eliminated in the first half of this reverse battle royal and uh, did not get to go to the single el elimination tournament. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this is why if, if you want to build up a tournament, do qualifying matches instead of this. Yes. This just seems yes. like... This seems overcomplicated. Yeah. Um, next we get to Lockdown in St. Louis, Missouri. James Storm versus OSR's, OSW's boy, Chris Harris. Mm hmm AK, Who, um, had come, had come back and was, and was still in his Braden Walker kind of shape. Actually, you know what? He wasn't. This was before that, but... This is before ACW. This was, but this, this is one of, this is one of the infamous instances the six sides of steel blindfold match. First off, you've got the sin of trying to gimmick gimmicks, and second blindfold. off, and um, this is OSW infamous. John, you may put this in the in the Russo tier because the blindfold kept falling off. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they kept Not trying to work it. Like normally, the reason the high water mark of a blindfold match is the WrestleMania match between. Um, between I between IRS Rick and Martel, Rick Martel, yeah, Rick Martel, and Jake um, the Snake Jake, Roberts, yeah, and it all and it still was shit because you saw you saw Jake the Snake poke a hole through, poke his finger through the eye hole. Yeah, but putting aside that, it ends up working because the whole point with that kind of thing is working the crowd to play hot and cold. mm Hmm. And it's all downhill from there. Yep. No. Uh -huh. you just, you, I mean, and also, can I can I just say that calling their their steel cage matches the six sides of steel is just pretentious and fucking stupid? Can I please say that? Because it's it's, it's just a steel cage it. match. It's TNA. They were always like this. I know, and, and I and I called them out every fucking time for it. Pretentious look, bullshit masters. Mm -hmm. I got to see the six sides, uh, the six sided ring when they uh, when Bound for Glory came uh, to Ottawa a few a few years back, and 
I was at Ranger Stop for that pay-per-view, but I got to see, I got a couple of tickets to see Impact in the Six Sided Steel. This was, and one of the matches was uh, that Six Sides of Steel match, Eli Drake versus John Morrison, or Johnny Impact, as he was called at the time. Mm-hmm. Not bad, and seeing the way they construct the Six Sides of Steel, look, I get it. it there, it's branding. That's all it is. It's branding. But to see mm-hmm. a six sides, uh, the, the six sides of steel, the the you can mistake it as an octagon thing, and at the time, not a bad idea. I, it's still pretentious to me. I'm sorry. It's just like, just call it what it is. It's a steel cage. Especially match. when you have a yearly pay per view where that's all they do. Ugh. Now that's pretentious. Lockdown. It worked once or twice, and that's about it. <sighs> The problem this was WWE your... gimmick before WWE gimmick was uncool. Let's put it that way. The problem with having all of your matches be gimmick matches for a pay per view is some of the feuds that you end up doing, um, that gimmick doesn't fit. No, no, it doesn't. Not at all. Now, next we have next we have um, another another instance of Survivor Series. Edge versus Triple H versus Vladimir Kozlov. Guess whose fault it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we can figure out where the problem was with this one. Edge, good worker. Triple H, good worker. Vladimir Kozlov, uh, fuck. This is Vince looking for and he'll look good. Fucking pal. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this match. That was a shit show. Edge and Triple H tried to work it, work it as well. But here's the thing: Edge was still a heel at the time, and, yeah. and Vladimir Kozlov was a heel, and Triple H was a baby face. Uh, yeah, a baby face. Nobody was liking at the time. Reign of Terror. This is yeah, yeah. no, no. This is not Reign of Terror. This is post. No, oh, this is. Well, that's, oh, this that's, that's his point. That's his point. Is that people still like it was still pretty fresh in people's minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Reign of Terror. But this is for the yeah. for the WWE title. Yeah, this is um, after the, the infamous it, Reign of Terror. But this is post reunion still, DX babyface and. Uh, this is this is still all bad shit that's in everybody's mind. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Everybody I, still I, remembers I just it. Remember a lot of people forgiving that and just remembering, hey, Triple H dropped poo on Vince McMahon. <laughs> that hey. was funny. Okay, I'm gonna say that was funny. <laughs> but hey, the whole hey, I I'm one of the staunch defenders of that of that two thousand six run. All right. Yeah. Now I'll here's, defend that DX reunion, goddammit. Here's here's the thing that, that I want to get across probably to most of our our uh Listeners, they probably don't know who the fuck Vladimir Kozlov is. No, this is why it's it's Kevin Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because in hindsight, in all that stuff, yes, Triple H and Edge had a bomb, but why do you think I opened up? I was like, guess whose fault it is? The guy nobody's ever heard of. The guy, the guy that they tried to push to the moon and was uh, dropped like a brick through an ocean. Yeah, let's well, put it this way. Not long after this, they ended up teaming up with Santina Morella and making him dance. And that was oh, a good move. Oh, yeah, I remember that seeing this. That was a good move because Vladimir Kosnoff was good at comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's true. Mm-hmm. In fairness. Yeah. Now, next... We, oh, 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 boy. oh boy! Now we're getting into the shit. <laughs> John, uh, John, do me a favor. Hit that Brian Alvarez button for me, real quick. Oh, give me just a second, my good buddy. There we go. Minus five stars. This I was, was wondering the... where that, folks. Monk, may I go ahead? I, I think I should. For those wondering where that clip comes from. Obviously, I mentioned Brian Alvarez, Brian and Vinny show. This clip, minus five stars, comes from this match being reviewed. Jenna Maraska versus Charmel. Oh, God. So, uh, 
This match made Brian Alvarez minus five stars angry. I'm just going to go ahead and save us the trouble. Thank yeah. You. No contest. Vince Russo tier. Now, first yeah. off. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you when you book a when you book a woman from Survivor to be in a wrestling match. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's, the, big, much that's the big thing. Yeah. The, yeah. Jenna Maraska was a contestant, was actually a uh, winner of Survivor Amazon in 2003. Mm -hmm. She played the heel great in Survivor. It did not translate to professional wrestling. At no. All. And Charmel was on the car because. Than her. And Charmel was there because Booker T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who? And, and she, I gave all the credit to Charmel. She was a great heel. She was a great heater. But I'm pretty sure even she would admit she shouldn't have. She done didn't belong in the goddamn ring. This was literally them building up to a thing. To blow off a thing, and uh, let's not hey, let's 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 up. not forget that both both sides were um, seconded, but were seconded at ringside by someone else. Um, I believe with I believe with and those two, those two other people were Awesome Kong and um, so Sojourner Bolt. Sojourner, Sojourner Bolt, aka you ain't my mama. <laughs> yeah, so Jenner Bolt with Charmel and Jenna Maraska with uh, Awesome Kong. Mm -hmm. And both of them were at ringside going, oh my god, what is this shit show? So Jenner Bolt, um, I don't remember her doing, her doing a whole lot after this. And Awesome Kong just did not give a fuck. She was clearly on her way out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and by, by the way, she recently retired at uh, the NWA Empower event, so we wish her all... All the good luck from now, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, she she wrestled for Impact until from uh, to 2009, and then she returned for for a cup of coffee in 2013. And she was uh, she was various storylines, and uh, she was a she pretty much became became a OVW lifer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I and obviously I'm generalizing for the sake of the show, but yeah, she's. Yeah. Impact was the highest she went as far as a, a, a mainline pro wrestling group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's let's not let's not forget that um Je um I don't know, I get I guess Je I guess Jen I guess Jenna Maraska really wanted to be really wanted to be a stripper. Yeah, and this is the, a the, the gear, the, her gear was was geared towards. I'm a strip because I'm a stick with tits. Emphasis on stick. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. By the way, that the, the, for those wondering that that that's just the definition. That's not the definite. The definition is she's uh, but brought in for her looks or her clout, but if not a not a ounce she of was fucking talent. Yeah, she was not an athlete. She was a face, and not in the traditional baby <laughs> yeah. face way. Uh, now, next we have an, we have an entry from NXT of all things. And keep in mind, this is not the good NXT. This is no, 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 um, no, 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 no. Actually, this, this was not Triple H NXT. This was Vince McMahon replacing ECW on Sci-Fi with NXT NXT. Mm -hmm. This was Game Show NXT. Reality. Yeah. NXT. If if we want to really give it its own theme song, we'd have to rip off a theme song from somewhere else. Ba 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 da. Ba ba da. <laughs> I'm trying oh. to find it again, but, uh, but so Maxine and Caitlyn would have better matches. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Caitlyn would have better matches. She became a women's champion. They would also uh, have worse matches. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> 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 saying good sir yeah but she was divas champion when the the butterfly butterfly the butterfly, butterfly blet I could talk <laughs> goddamn it apparently I cannot <laughs> but uh yeah she got worse matches because uh <laughs> she, she pops up again a few years later yeah but uh divas championship and she won the DNXT game show of season three. And this is where uh, this is pretty much uh, for those wondering that bad Evan NXT, yeah. This is where um, this is where Adam Cole, the, the, no, not Adam Cole, Michael Cole. I'm still hype on all out. Okay, shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fine. We understand. But yeah. uh, this Ready was uh, 
this was a, no, this was a little bit after uh, bullshit Adam Cole or Michael, Michael Cole. Cole. <laughs> yeah, my, my, Michael or uh, heel Michael Cole started in season one of this bullshit. This yeah. was season three, if I remember correctly. Yeah, still around, but he was he was carrying the gong with the with the with the sign "Stop this pain." CM Punk practically rifted the goddamn show. Yeah, this was... They didn't know what the fuck they were doing <laughs> until yeah. then. They were just and, uh, throwing shit at the wall. Caitlin, mm-hmm. thankf- thankfully, did much better for herself as, a, as yeah. a wrestler, and when she got out, she um went ba- she went back to modeling and, fo- and, start- and started the um, Celestial Bodies um, company, which has yeah, done she, pretty well for, for she, herself. She, she, she had a good run. It, just, it was just a case of the way she worked and everything else. Had she come around around 2015, 2016, she probably would have done better. Mm-hmm. Probably and, not. and Maxine, um, Lucha Underground. She was she was Kat- she was Katrina in Lu- in Lucha Underground, which I'd say worked out for her. She she yeah, found it, he she found her calling. Let's put it that it, way. I mm-hmm. would I would like to state for the record that on Wikipedia. Uh, they they don't have her under as Maxine. They do have her under as Katrina as the main. As Katrina, because she was the manager of Min Muertes mm. in exactly. Lucha Underground, and she was perfect in that role. Yep. Yep. If you, I don't know where you could find Lucha Underground now. I'm pretty sure it's in in the depths of streaming, so you may have to go. Uh, I know. I know, where it, I know where it is. Everybody who knows where it is knows where it is. Oh. And the best, the best part, the service that I, the service that I found it on, free. Do you oh, mean? yeah, yep. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'll need, I'll need to read. I'll, I'll need to reach out to, and try and find. Cause I don't know if it's available in Canada anymore. But for you folks in the states, the first two seasons, especially, watch Katrina. You would think, wait, that's Maxine. Yes, night and day. Mm-hmm. She found her calling in that time. Oh, so yeah. then. Would you say that this is a this is either just not that bad or completely inoffensive at this point? I'm, put, I'm putting this in the Kevin Sullivan because you had two <laughs> people at the time who were green as goose shit. Yeah, yeah. This is Kevin Sullivan simply be, because of that, and yet, of course, this is at the time. Oh, this would have been Jim Hurd, but with the benefit of time and knowing how better the both women inevitably became, this is Kevin Sullivan here. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Now, next. Oh boy! Do we even need to do we need to say the tier? We already know what tier this one is. Yeah, this the is worst of funny. the worst in this in this list. Victory Road once again. Mm-hmm. Orlando, Florida, March thirteenth. Sting versus Jeff Hardy, the ninety second shit show. Of course, oh, it's in yeah. Florida. <laughs> This is the, this is the impact zone. So, uh, yeah, still Florida. <laughs> See, oh, yeah. For I those have... who have not heard of this disaster, the, the the main problem here, you know, you think Sting and Jeff Hardy, they're amazing athletes. How the fuck did this turn into a shit show? Simple. Simple. Jeff, Jeff Hardy, Hardy was on meds. His ass. Yeah, and Jeff now, Hardy was, now, this was not tight. This was not illegal drugs. This was pain medication and a whole lot of stuff. Just a bad combination, and his mind uh, obviously went off, went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I'll t- tell you what, to, to sum it up simply, Monk, do you still have the splash screen up? I'd, I do not. Show the pl- splash screen, because that's the perfect example. That Yeah, that face. image of Jeff Hardy, that face he makes, sums that up better than anything we could do to describe this. That you and the fact that it off his the ass. Match- Bad. Let me... And to the point that Sting, as he was leaving, as he was ending the match and leaving, he just you could just see the look on his face of, oh dear fucking Christ. So... He was openly apologizing to the crowd in some shots. Well, wow. Here, here's here's how it happened. I'm I'm gonna read the actual victory victory road entry on the Jeff Hardy controversy. Oh, <clears throat> go ahead. While Hardy's entr- entrance music played, he did not come out for over 40 seconds before he emerged clearly intoxicated and under the influence of drugs, then stumbled out and staggered his way into the ring, 
Uh, Hogan Bishop era, by the way. Mm -hmm. Forcing uh, referee Brian Hebner to give an X sign during Sting's entrance. Uh, Following an audible from Bischoff uh, and Hardy spending over a minute teasing the crowd over whether or not he'd throw his shirt, uh, Sting used the Scorpion Death Drop and forcefully shoot pinned him to end the match in 88 seconds. Basically, Uh, Bischoff with the Sting said, shoot pin him, he's off his tits. Yep. Um, Upon exiting the ring, uh, Sting responded to chants from fans who were outraged at the length of the match, as well as Hardy's condition, as the fans could clearly see he was unable to wrestle. Many fans were chanting bullshit, and as Sting was walking up the ramp, he said, I agree, I agree! Mm -hmm. This was so bad that TNA apologized to fans for the pay-per-view falling short of TNA's standards and gave six months of free access to TNAondemand.com to anyone who bought the event. Wow. That's bad. I, uh, that is very They sad. were the main event. Yeah. They were the main fucking event. Yeah. The this rest of the like pay-per-view wasn't that match. The rest of the pay-per-view wasn't much better. No. Yeah, the rest of the pay-per-view was um, Dreamer versus Tommy Dreamer versus Bully Ray. Uh, Rosita and Sarita against Angelina Love and Winter. Uh, Hernandez against Matt Morgan, uh, Kazarian against uh, Jeremy Buck, Max Buck, and Robbie E. with Cookie, uh, Beer Money versus Ugh. Inc. Incorporated, AJ Styles versus Matt Hardy with Ric Flair, um, Mr. Anderson versus Rob Van Dam. It, it was not an impressive card. No, there, there were a few. There were a few in there that had a potential to be good. Um, Let's put it this way, folks: the best part of that era was the was the Jay Lethal Ric Flair woo off. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's not let's not also forget that this era brought us the one brought, brought us a ti- a title that managed to out ugly the butterfly belt. Oh God, I remember that piece. And which uh, which belt was that, that, Monk? Go ahead. Jeff Hardy's <laughs> immortal ti- Jeff Hardy's immortal yeah. title. So people would say, people people reasonably people the Divas Championship is the ugliest looking belt in modern wrestling. DNA, hold our survey. Hold the beer. Uh, just go. Anybody who wants to see how fucking disgusting this belt is, just look up TNA Immortal Jeff Hardy Champion Title Belt replicas on Amazon. What makes it even worse, by the way, Immortal Jeff Hardy was actually good. Jeff it- Hardy was a surprisingly decent heel, folks. The pr- the unfortunate part was people loved Jeff Hardy too much. Yeah, uh, and because and because of because of that, the he- the heel turn just didn't work. Mm-hmm. Which is sad because the work he was trying to do to make him look believable as a heel, people didn't believe it. He worked his ass off, but it didn't work. Yeah, he was he was a good worker too. He was a really oh, he good was. Worker. So. Next, we we um we return we return to WWE. Oh God damn it, people power! <laughs> John Cena versus John Laurinaitis, no DQ, over the limit, Raleigh, North Carolina. Normally, I would say whose fault it is. This was a nothing match. Which Big Show fucked up. Mm-hmm. I Turn have... number 773, I believe. <laughs> I gotta know. It, was who's, Whose idea was it to make John Cena Superman? Like Vincent Jeremy McMahon. There you go. That's whose fault this is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And I'll to be qu- John Lauren John Laurinaitis during this time was go away heat for me simply simply because of, of the of the fact that he okay I I will say this the only good thing that came out of John Laurinaitis's um e- evil authority r- run was the music video that CM Punk made for him at the Slammies. You know, where he- <laughs> You know where he came. Where he came out with. He came out with a mannequin with a. D- Look, Laurinaitis. Um, even when he was a worker, was all was, <laughs> was not was not good. He had he had 
yeah, he had a, he he won a lot of tag team gold in Japan, but a lot of the time when he was working when he was doing tag team stuff, he was working with better workers. When he was let's put it this way, folks: mm -hmm. tag team matches in Japan are a way to get a whole lot of people they, they're on the card at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not exactly indicative of work. Especially especially when you're working alongside better workers. In the case of Japan, he was working with doc he was working alongside Dr. Death. In the ca in the case of the dynamic dudes, he was working with Shane Douglas. Cut his fucking music. Mm. And fuck Ric Flair. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> but as as much as we make fun as much as we make fun of um of of Shane of Shane Douglas <laughs> having it having managing to piss off everyone, um, he was the better worker in those in those situations. So mm -hmm. he was so, more nice. Was Johnny Ace was a supplement, mm -hmm. a good supplement, <laughs> and a kind of guy that with a good worker could make do a great match. But this is twenty twelve. The writing's on the fucking wall, folks. Yeah. yeah. Now. But it, but all all things considered, the whole thing was just one giant schmoz with a fuck finish. Pretty much. So I'm putting this in Kevin Sullivan tier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, you could you can make an argument for Dusty Rhodes tier if you want, but it it it's, it doesn't deserve that. It's still John Laurinaitis. Yep. Um, next, we have Survivor Series in Boston. And All right, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you just to read the match, and I will react accordingly. Just just okay. you. Okay. Brie Bella, Nikki Bella, Natalia, Naomi, Cameron, Eva Marie, and JoJo versus AJ Lee, Tamina, Caitlyn, Alicia Fox, Oksana, Rosa Mendez, and Summer Rae. Okay. So first of all, Eva Marie's on the goddamn thing. Russo tier automatic. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, no, no. Kinda... actually, this is it, this is in jest, mm -hmm. of course. This is this is this is Dusty Rhodes tier, mm -hmm. because this is literally months before the the, the quote unquote divas revolution would begin. So, you got a whole lot of people in there who are good super workers, or who or, or would inevitably become good workers, but are strapped with. Put, put put your shit in. You have five minutes tops. Mm -hmm. This was not going to work well, and a lot of them were there were there, and they were stick with sticks with tits. Hi Eva, how do you do? Bree and Nikki would get better. Oksana and Rosa, Oksana, Alicia Fox. I want to say JoJo, but I, I'm not going to say JoJo. This was filled with sticks with tits and a whole and a bunch of people who. We tried. This was the epitome of let's put let's put all the fancy women for the looks in the. That's it. Mm -hmm. This was them trying to get attention with sex appeal, which works for the first twenty seconds. This was this like, was a Survivor Series piss break. Yeah, this is keep the eyes on the ring while we get the other guys up to speed. Uh, the tits will distract them, right, guys? And the tits did distract the audience for like twenty seconds. Now, Naomi, Cameron, Naomi especially would have would, would have a would 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 be better. Nikki and Brie are, are effective heels eventually in in the uh, in 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 the modern era when they were brought up. Uh, JoJo was an announcer, or even Maria's bullshit. This was total divas, by the way. Mm, uh, yeah, this is just thinks of total uh, divas. Caitlyn had better matches. Obviously, Alicia Fox was Alicia Fox. Oksana was, unfortunately, a stick with tits. Rosa Mendez had a better run. I don't think she won a lot of championships. I, it, let me check the way. She wiki. didn't. Yeah. Not the worst wrestler in the world, but, I, I, you know, not much. And Summer Rae, stick with tits. Oh. Though she would, she, would have, she would have better ish matches. She mm -hmm. did have. She did have. She did have a much better character in um, NXT. That and her run with Fandango as as Fandango's dance partner was a a lucky break. Mm -hmm. Well, shades. Um, yes. 
going back to Rosa Mendez for a second, you should at least be happy she was queen of FCW at least one time. She was, which was her women's championship, by the way. Uh. Yeah. Um, FCW, OVW, um, but she also got a Slammy Award. Actually, for uh, best use of exercise equipment, which is basically it, saying, here's a sticker. Yeah. Actually, I know. fun fact mentioning FCW. I've actually had the chance to film an FCW show when I was in high school. Nice. Oh, nice. They, they were going to local high schools at the time, and they actually came to mine. And since I was in TV production that year, I actually got the chance to film it. Now, I think I fucked it up so badly they couldn't use it, sadly. But, hey, I got to go to a free wrestling show. Who am I to blame? And, mm-hmm. they, and this is forget- FCW. They didn't give a fuck about the quality. They just wanted to, to, to have someone on the hard cam so they could see. Okay, you fucked rem- up that spot, that spot, that spot. Yeah, I, I don't More remember all the names that were there that year, that night, but I do remember the main event featured Hector Guerrero. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I do remember that name popping up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, just figured I'd drop that little thing. Yeah, this is the only reason it's not uh, Dusty Rhodes tier. Is that this, actually, did we put it Dusty Rhodes tier or Kevin Selvin tier? We put this we... at Dusty Rhodes. In 2013, yeah, this was Dusty Rhodes tier mm-hmm. back then. But this was this was the, at the end of the uh, of the Divas era, the Sticks with Tits era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for those wondering, uh, the why the that the explanation of the Sticks with Tits, one of my one of my favorite and one of the first Russell Cast running gags. It's all centered around Ric Flair's induction. Triple H said that Ric Flair could wrestle a broomstick for a full hour and put the broomstick over in the process. Uh, complimenting Ric Flair's ability to take anyone, anyone at any level of work rate or any level of skill level, and bring him up to make him look like they could hang with the world champion. That's how good Ric Flair was. Mm-hmm. Well, at the time, 2008, what was, a, what was the equivalent of a broomstick? Shit workers. And a lot of the time, shit workers were women. And more often than not, Women in WWE at the time were brought up for their looks more over their skill level. They were still trained to take a bump if need, if need be, but they were brought in to keep the peop- to keep the uh, the male audience uh, distracted uh, and off the, uh, and without changing the channel. Basically, tits. So sticks with tits. Mm-hmm. And this was at the tail end of that era where there were some workers, Naomi Cameron. Uh, AJ Lee, obviously, but look at the other names. Sticks, Swift Hits. Yep. Now, next is Extreme Rules, John Cena versus Bray Wyatt, Steel Cage. Well, let me see here. I believe this would have been a fucked finish kind of situation. Yeah. Wyatt, w- Wyatt um, defeated Cena by escaping. This was, oh, I yeah. believe, this, this was, was this was the, the one where they had the little boy that with the super odd. Oh boy. yeah, the mind games, the mind games. Yeah, yeah I remember this one now. World in his hands. Now, okay. For the record, Dave Brian, bullshit. Was it? It's not the worst match. Okay, fair enough. But was that finish that bad? This was character building. This yeah, and uh, in hindsight, this is Dusty Rhodes tier. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's a it's a case of look, you're already you're already handicapping yourself when it comes to what you can do in a um in a steel cage. And to be quite honest, um, this is the this is the problem when you're tr- when you're trying to put in a gimmick to a match that um d- that doesn't fit. Steel cage matches are supposed to be feud enders, and this was a feud continuer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this guy's as a potential feud ender because this was this is Bray trying to get uh, trying to pull a cane and get uh, Cena to embrace the hate mm-hmm. so speak, or another or another version of that. Yeah, this was it, the match was okay. Just the finish was. Ugh. Then again, I don't, I don't remember the crowd being super into the match, and this was prime John. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks stuff. So. Now, next we 
We've got our we've got our first and only entry from Mexico. Lucha oh, twenty fifty. Oh, I saw this pay per view. I, I saw thinking, it too. I remember I like, it. We're we have we have triple mania. For, we have triple mania for the first time in a at, with English commentary, and this was hot off the heels of a lot of people really starting to get exposed to to triple A thanks to Lucha oh, Underground. This, this was Triple A thanks to Lucha Underground, and this was in the middle of the New Japan movement as well, because mm-hmm. Russell Kingdom 9. Yes. Folks, I don't... I, I have to deep look deep in the archives, and I'm not going to pull that work, folks, but uh, this was Botch Central. This was... This was, this was bo- now, first, there was really bad audio, for one. For two... Um, you had you you had you had a um, you had a essentially a t- essentially a TV finish at the at the end of, at the end of this pay per view that was that was built that was built upon a dream match of um, Mi- of Mystico versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Who who was coming in in a fucking bird man that looked awesome. And <laughs> we love yeah. Ray Mysterio Jr. I'm sorry. And um, a- after that, after that, they after that they hinted up about a challenge for a um, mascara v mascara e mascara match, mask versus mask. Which um, as anyone who's watched a fair amount of Lucha Libre will tell you, um, that's how the sell levels. Cha- mm-hmm. Challenges happen all the time in AAA and CMLL, and nothing comes of them. Which is weird for Lucha. This yeah, is- let's put this this way. In Mexican lore, when you put Lucha's des puestas, and I apologize for the for the pronunciation, mm-hmm. uh, basically they're the equivalent of a steel cage match, uh, of the traditional street cage end of feud ender. Basically, a mask versus mask match is literally the, the, the wrestler's identities on the line. As in, you lose a mask, yep. you don't get to wear it anymore. Mm-hmm. You you don't get to go to Mexico, and or you only get to go to the states or Canada without someone t- tapping you on the wrist, going no mask, asshole. Mm-hmm. Com- now they forgave Ray Mysterio because WCW was bullshit, so that's how they explained that away. Mm-hmm. Now, but uh, but there, in there Mexico, were a lot. In, the, in the big in the big leagues, you put your mask on the line, it's shoot, you lose. Oh. It's yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Now, there were a lot. There were there were some. There were some good matches. There was there were some bad matches. Um, I will I will admit that one of the one of the better matches, unfortunately, was Brian Cage versus Alberto Del Dipshit. Yeah. <laughs> the hair versus hair match. Yeah. Um. Brian Cage. If you're if you're one. wondering why Brian Cage has a mo- mohawk and lucha underground. I- Practically, why? Yeah, um, he he lost to Alberto Del Dipshit. The um the three the oh. I'd say I'd say a I'd say a runner up for worst match of this pay per view was the was the th- was the triple threat trios steel cage match, which is which is well, not, which, which, baffles five, two, why, which baffles the mind why did that didn't watch didn't didn't win the fucking thing. Uh, no award, but it is what it is at that point. Uh, as far as where it belongs in the tier, I yeah, I mean, well, we need we need to go we need to go over who was in this because this definitely was the worst since we had bad audio throughout this particular one. Uh-huh. We have um, Lost Sy- Lost Psycho Circus, uh, Monster Clown, Murder Clown, and Psycho Clown. Which, by the way, Psycho Clown is fucking over in Mexico. By the way, so this oh, yeah. is, you know, and we have um. Los Villanos, Villano three, four, and five, and I believe I believe uh, at the time Villano four had just recovered from a stroke not too long ago. Oh fuck! Twenty fifteen. Let's check the wiki. And this oh, was, and this was not apparently v- yeah. And this was apparently Villano three's retirement match. Yeah. Not only that, but it was the retirement match for the ref. There, ah. there was just. Every, everybody, everybody was sloppy. Everybody was botchy. There were se- there were several instances where the audio kept fucking up. It was just 
bad. It was just bad. It was a it was a perfect storm of bad. Murphy's yeah. Law. Mm-hmm. They they meant for they meant it for be a feel good match in the middle of a card, and Murphy pops up says nope, botchamania. But all things considered, there were far worse off- There were far more offensive matches that we that we've covered and will cover. I'm putting this in Kevin Sullivan tier. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it still it still did some damage because if you're tuning in to watch uh, Thanks to Lucha Underground, this was not a good first impression. No. Yeah, if, uh, which this, which is why it does not it does not get the Dusty Rhodes treatment at that point. Yeah, Murphy's Law is not enough of an offender to ju- to justify get to justify getting a higher getting a higher tier plus. You had a you had a lot of you had a lot of guys who clearly shouldn't be working at their age. That that and again going back to Lucha Underground, you you were riding that riding that high, mm-hmm. and it obviously it, 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 the the quality did did not match, or was not there to match with with uh, with, with Lucha Underground. And that was I think, but that knocked AAA out back a few years as far as popularity, at least outside of Mexico. In Mexico, it was a nothing thing. And you obviously, this was the middle of the card, and you didn't know anybody. It I'd, is what it is. I'd say these days, trip, AAA is slowly recovering, largely because um, CMLL has been fucking up so much. <laughs> True, and to be fair, Triple E has been has been around as a, as the number one or number two. They've it's been interchangeable. Mm-hmm. I watched the the recent Triple A Triple uh, Triple Mania, dude. I think the only reason that I think people were that, that the balloon the air was let out when they when uh, Andrade lost against Omega, but it's like, dude, they got to see Ric Flair outside of the Fed. Shrug. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. A fine a fine evening of wrestling, but for ultimately will be forgettable in a few years. Yeah. Which again, nothing wrong with uh, with that. As long as you had a good time, that's what counts. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. um C- but CMLL, well, I'd say I'd say the most damning in- damning indication of the of their status is the fa- is the fact that a lot of the- that they've lost a lot of their top guys because they kept pissing them off. Specifically and, uh, Roosh and Dragon Lee. Which who are wor- who are working with Ring of Honor and there I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there there's stuff happening. Wait, are you saying and that I CMLL don't... pulled pulled a WWE Vince McMahon? Fair. <laughs> fair. Yeah, That's especially, a fair comparison. Especially since, fair. especially since the big source of the heat was Roosh was Roosh wanting to work PWG. And uh, CMLL went new. Ring of Honor would have been. Cool. We we have many of our Ring of Honor people working CM, working PWG. Why P- not? And CMLL went nope. PWG is the wrestling equivalent to Magfest, especially Battle of Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, that's that's a that for me is like that's a bucket list going to, to to see a Battle of Los Angeles or at least one PWG show mm-hmm. because a lot of people worked in PWG. There are, and there's interest for with all. Of uh, of of uh, of wrestling. Let's put it this way: Adam Cole, the Bucks, Kevin Steen. No, those are, and uh, that's the Mount Rushmore, as they would call themselves. Mm-hmm. All in the top company right now. Kevin Kevin Owens, former Universal Champion, perennial mm-hmm. top contender, upper mid card. He's set for life. Bucks. Do I need to see anything else? And Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> do, do I need to exposit more? Nah, nah, I think we get the point. And that's just mm-hmm. four. I could give you a whole list of people, including Malachi Black. Mm-hmm. Well, I think at this point, our uh, our dear listeners will understand PWG's greatness. And there, yeah, there are there are, cl- a great indie. there are cl- there are there are clips of great moments of uh, in PWG all over YouTube. Just bin- just binge that kind of stuff. Pro oh, wrestling for- gorilla, <laughs> have some fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Next, oh boy, we're back to TNA, and oh boy, I, re- I remember this. Ooh, this uh, this was this oh. was during that there was an experiment that um that TNA did in the mid 2010s of doing these one night only um pay per views, kind of like their own think, version of In Your House. Yeah, that was gonna say think In Your House, but uh, with with, uh, with themes and 
hey, you know what? At worst, it's it's a couple of bucks. It, it most of it would be non-canon or works worse serve some little uh, storyline, but they would be non-canon in mm-hmm. the in the greater thing of the state of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but th- this one was one night only knockouts knockdown, which obvi- obviously was ju- obviously was all about their women's division, i.e., the knockouts, and. In the in this we in this we had um we had one we had one girl who was who was part who was part of a state who um I think this I think she was part of the menagerie at the time um or this was shortly after it I can't I can't remember and I yeah. don't feel like going through mid 2010s TV let's, to look let's let's keep it simple mm-hmm. Shelly Martinez was known as Ariel mm-hmm. in ECW. <clears throat> I'll let you, uh, for our listeners. I'll give you a few seconds to explain uh, to uh, Google it. Yep. And Rubble is exactly who you think it is. That same Rubble who seconds Doctor Britt Baker, D M D. And if you're a wrestling fan, you did that at the same time as I did, and I appreciate you for it. You're welcome, but Maddie. This ma- this match. Oh boy. This was this was the match that brought that brought us the inf- that brought us um the infamous my badge my badge yeah because be- with rebel trying to sell a banana split oh. yeah <sighs> a female low blow and that that's bad rebel rebel is is great as a second in a role this is probably why <laughs> and uh, for those playing home game about around Shelly Martinez. Yes, stick with tits. Pretty, even even by even by even had by to, the had to pay off that joke there. Had to <laughs> pay off that joke there. Even with the even with the low the low standards of that era, Shelley was still bad. <laughs> and this was 2016. So I mean, um, if if you want to know how how bad Shelley was as an actress in general, um. She resorted to porn. Rea- reality TV is. and Be porn. 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 Uh, re- reality TV and porn. I don't know which is which needs uh, worse acting skills. Yeah. She, she was on the search for the next Elvira. She, yeah, she was basically that. She, and and yes, she was in porn specifically with Jewel Denial. Mm-hmm. And let well, me Google it. Twenty sixteen in professional wrestling. Uh, Let's see. NXT was a thing. I want to. I want to say that the women's uh, evolution began here. This is. Uh, this is where things get blurry for me. Like that, I, I, when I start stop getting fucking say, Let me, let's make fun of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think. I think the the, um, the ham versus the actress who couldn't is a uh, is the best way to uh. To uh basically, that. basically. <laughs> uh, oh, Hanuk Kapoor debuted in, 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 in this in this year. Okay, hmm. that makes me a little sad, but th- that's what it is. Uh, the Universal Title was created in that year, so this is a couple years into the NXT Women's Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um. Put it this way, uh, NXT was uh, was uh, was hot shit at the time, and uh, yeah. women's wrestling as a whole evolved, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. This is basically the antithesis. Uh, in 2016, Shelly Martinez versus Rebel. Rebel's pro- I'm not going to knock her because I have not seen enough uh, of, uh, of, of her work to say that she was bad, but Shelly Martinez was a stick with tits. And because of that, I'm putting this in the Jim Hurd tier. I was gonna say as bad now as it was then. Yeah. Essentially, there's no escaping it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and this, but it, it it's ultimately harmless. But it, you watch it back and you go, yeah, yeah, it was earned. Yep. For the last four, I see we're moving yet again back into the terry territory of a uh, Vinny McFucking. Oh, this, yeah, this is uh, this is the territory of Vince McMahon. Fucking shit. Like I said, Vinny McFuckass. Ah, uh, and I remember Junior. this next entry. Oh, I was God. watching this one live with you. Yes, I remember you watching were. it live, live in person with Darren, our our buddy Darren, uh, of the Nostalgia Promo. 
Uh, oh, we were laughing our asses off at that. Yeah, to set the stage, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton, WrestleMania 33. Once again, it's fucking Florida. <laughs> with a Florida, <laughs> with, with a Florida man. Let's not forget. I'd like yeah. to point out that that this was for the WWE Championship. Yep. And it wasn't even the main fucking event. Nope. Not even close. And what made it worse, <laughs> what really made it worse was because Bray Wyatt. Just simply because Bray Wyatt, they decided they wanted to have uh, do something creative with projected this, maggots, Sean. Let's just call it what it is: projected magic maggots to provide mind games. Rand Yorn's a good worker; he is not a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. This was bad, and the Fed should feel bad. And folks, just because <laughs> it's WrestleMania, as in. You can watch that shit unedited or, well, they can edit out uh, whatever they could, but they can't edit out that shit. Russo, dear. Yeah, I agree. Any, yeah. Other, any other event, this would be Jim Hurd territory. Yeah, but this but is this WrestleMania, is one of the largest events of the year. WrestleMania, WWE title. It ain't going to age well. Russo, dear. It's only gotten worse with time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look back on it, you're like, how the fuck did they ever think of that? Not to look, I'm I'm going I'm going to be I'm going to be flat out honest. Um there should be there should be a rule there should be a rule written in etched in stone that Randy Orton should never play babyface. How do you explain his run with with uh, Matt Riddle? I'm 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 going to You gonna, know the I'm other gonna... shoe's going to drop with that. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, eventually. But I'm going right to quote. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quote. Uh, I'm going to quote a video that's humorous. Uh, Randy Orton. I'm a fucking snake. <laughs> <laughs> he should never ever be anything. By the way, the fact that he had a projected sperm uh, on the on the Russell on the WrestleMania stage ramp. <sighs> I know Here's it was your sign. I know what what it was supposed to be, but it's but we're still going to it's call it a bait. fucking <laughs> sperm for God's sake. And the the sad thing is, beyond besides that, WrestleMania thirty three was a pretty good was a pretty good card. Yeah, the only thing that brought it down would be that match and Taker versus Reigns. And if you watch Undertaker the last ride, Undertaker's full of responsibility for that. He his body was not there to bring to to, to match Roman Reigns. And Simply I mean, think, think about it. Taker has technically retired and come back how many times? His last time was was last year's WrestleMania, and he's WWE Vince would want to retcon it, but in the original airing of the last ride, he basically said, "I'm done." Yeah, I, I mean, he's been pulled back by McMahon being a dipshit. And him having to save things every so often. I think, let's put it this way. Vince is smart enough to realize if The Undertaker says, I'm done, he's done. And he, again, if you go back to that uh, to that documentary, he said, good enough with, with AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. He said, I ain't topping this. Yeah. I'm done. I am done. Vince can yeah. do whatever he wants. Taker is going to say, "I'll come back for the for the Hall of Fame, and maybe a tombstone here and there." But I I ain't taking bumps anymore. I mean, consider fair play let's, to the man. Let's consider the fact that Taker has been doing this job for literally had literally at, at this point since he officially retired last year, literally wrestling for thirty years, and he's no spring chicken. He's nearly you. sixty. He is a bionic yeah. Undertaker. He's soup. He and I, I'm. Let's be perfectly honest about Taker. He's probably one of the few characters who I don't think really ever got into a negative rut. Like he had parts where he got no. bad. One one would argue his uh, the, uh, the the first couple of years of his American badass role. I mean, we just brought up a, 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 a his uh, worst match of the year candidate in two thousand one. Yeah. But, he's had he's had slumps like anybody else, but nothing like that lasts a really long time. It does, and it also it doesn't stick as much as the high points. Mm -hmm. Taker has been one of those those uh, wrestlers who I think is an epitome of why you watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. That, is, that is the type of person I see Taker as. By the way, that, that that's how bad the match was. By the way, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. And just just to <laughs> just to do a capstone when it comes when it comes to Undertaker, if you can find it, I highly I highly recommend listening to the to possibly the possibly one of the greatest covers of Graveyard Symphony, done by the Traumatosis Musical Project. Oh, I've heard. I know of what you hear. He is not kidding. To the point At where all. I um. I at one point tried to campaign to get to get that one played as as an entrance. He found a way to combine the original Graveyard Symphony and later remix and um the the um the brother the Brotherhood um get the Brotherhood ooh, era. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Not a Brotherhood, the Ministry era. And the ministry add era, lyrics yeah. and make it all fucking work. It yes. does, you know. The Graveyard Symphony is a fantastic um, no. Look, Monk, Monk. I know you were trying to avoid the last three matches, but we got, we got it, we got it. Uh, yeah, yeah let's... we've been talking about the Undertaker. No, so t- <laughs> no, do not ruin it. Yeah. We got to talk Sweet about. Money. We got to talk about Sweet Saudi Money Two Electric Ooh. Shitaloo. Ooh, yeah, Generation Saudi. X versus <laughs> Brothers of Destruction. They bought Bat Michaels for this and his bald heed. Bald! 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 My eye! I... I, uh, Speaking of Murphy's Law... Honestly, this this match should never have happened. And yet, canon. Yeah. I don't... I don't give a fuck if it's canon. There's no way DJ and X can beat the Brothers of Destruction. Fuck them. No, but here, here, no, but no, it doesn't matter who wins or loses at that point. Everybody loses at they that point. Michaels had the perfect retirement. Yes, had he did. Yeah. multiple opportunities with more co- with competent professionals, including AJ Styles, and he went, "Nah, bruh, I'm good." He came back for uh, Brothers of Destruction. And in fairness, the match that brought him back, the match before, was Triple H versus Undertaker one last time. And that match wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. I remember watching it. They were, in, they were in Australia. Australia was a hot crowd. They didn't have to do much. They played the hits. It was fine. And the setup was, okay, cool. And they, they brought Michaels back out of retirement and they, they did their thing. And then Murphy's Law happened. Triple H, uh, I believe, tore his pec or something from his uh, from his arm off the bone. That was done. Mm-hmm. Oh. Kane's mask fell off at one point. Which is and, never good. Which was never good. And Michaels, rising might, ring rust. Yeah, that's what happens when you're out when you've been outside of the ring for eight for eight long years. Eight years. Yep. Wow. They, they 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 that's Saudi that's sweet Saudi money, folks. That's what it was. And again, in a perfect world, this would have been a nothing match. Where okay, Shawn Michaels was in a tag match; he was protected, but hey. In a perfect world, Michaels would have shown up to work with a with an extra lunch, and Taker and Michaels would have played the hits, and we we probably would be praising it. And some other hapless bastard, probably Bill Goldberg, would probably wound uh, wound up in this list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Unfortunately for Michaels and Triple H, this was a, this was an infamous dud. Now, this is two years, two or three years ago. I have to put it in Jim Hurd. The benefit of time probably will wind up in Kevin Sullivan territory because, again, the context, and again, this is going referring to the uh, Undertaker Last Ride uh, mm-hmm. documentary. Yeah. Murphy's Law sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. The, it, the, when the context, you'll, you'll still think, oh, this is bad. This, this is Russo territory, but no, this is Jim Hurd. <laughs> And eventually, it'll wind up in Kevin Sullivan territory because it, it's it's bad. 
And right now it's absolute Jim Hurd territory because it's Saudi Arabia and goddamn the allure of money has Brock Lesnar coming back. Vince Vince McFuckass being Vince McFuckass. Let's it, let's like, also let's not forget that um there that um the other the other issue is this was this was right around the time that there was some significant political turmoil in Saudi in Saudi Arabia because of the um because Hell, of the, fact the whole that, thing the whole thing of Crown Jewel and and uh, the Greatest Royal Rumble was that this is a ten year deal mm -hmm. where Saudi Arabia gets the WWE twice a year. Because their project was to make them look good. It's essentially a PR move. This is propaganda. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason why we are we're applauding the, the, this is because Titus World Slide. And oh, everything yeah. else is like, oh, it's that it's that time of year where Vince McMahon gets a shitload of money and we get a house show on WWE Network. Mm -hmm. Most of it's inoffensive. Most of it. But when Bill Goldberg almost fucks up uh, The Undertaker, and that's not the worst match of the fucking year. Yeah, that that there's an example right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think and there's now, a reason Goldberg now now mostly focuses on doing cars on his YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, However, we now reach two year the last two years, which I am going to dub Vince McMahon just obviously does not know how to handle Bray Wyatt. Now, because uh, be go ahead. Now, I'll be I'll be honest. This was this was the this was a case of very unfortunate timing. Now, the two thousand the two thousand nineteen entry is Seth Rollins versus the Fiend at hell. This at was hell bad cell. booking and bad this, timing. Bad now, Bray Wyatt. I was there. Mm -hmm. When the fiend walked into our screens for the first time, I was there. SummerSlam, twenty nineteen. He buried Finn Balor. He beat him so damn bad. He went back to NXT mm -hmm. and had a better and a good run. Thank God for him. I was there. The fiend was a legit merch sellout. You could you find you would find examples of things. On the first night, sold the fuck out by the event of TakeOver. Whoa. That's a shoot. And they had more merch at SummerSlam by the, by the Goldberg, uh, Goldberg experienced the shit out of Dolph Ziggler several goddamn times, which, by the way, that was funny. I and think I to will, this I day, guess, Dolph Ziggler is still selling that spear. He still is. And uh, you know what? If, for, for, all, for all the faults and all the shit we give Bill Goldberg, I was there and... Hearing Dolph Ziggler just trying to, to say, "Give me another goddamn spear, goddamn it, you dipshit!" Mm -hmm. Can I call this Hell in a Cell a Russo level? Because I want to call this Hell in a Cell a Russo level because of the finish. To because be honest, of the fact that Hell in a Cell is designed that the ref can't stop it. It's Russo level. Yeah, this it's yeah. Russo level. Not only not only that, the crowd ba the crowd shat on the whole thing. The crowd They're, shat on the. It's a red cage. Mm -hmm. It's a red, red lighting. Because apparently Dark. they didn't. Apparently they didn't. Um, why wasn't that? Why wasn't anybody who had worked in who had worked in TNA t telling telling the agent, "Don't fucking do a red cage. We try we tried that in Florida and it and it bombed." Because yeah. because got Vince fire fire fuck fuck ass ass ass. for God's mm -hmm. sakes. It's because this? Vince McFuck ass is an idiot. And the, the cage needs to be toyetic by the fuck. Uh, but, yeah. No, this is bad on so many levels. Because A, obviously the finish, and that's what makes it Russo level. But yeah, what next. solidifies it at Russo level is because the Fiend was red hot. You didn't need to put the belt on Bray Wyatt. It's a slow build where it eats away at other people. As the as, uh, Adam Blompier did a better booking, fantasy booking of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Vince had a hot thing. Seth Rollins wanted a hot thing, and they put him together to do a WWE Universal title thing. It basically and I don't hit, need to it, say anything else. It basically murdered Seth Rollins' babyface run that he had had after... Though his, uh, his, uh, his Twitter though his uh, Twitter alter his Twitter alter ego did not help things. No. Which is which is why he should have listened to CM Punk's advice. Stop tweeting. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, but this was peak Rollins saying, "Oh, we we were the hardest workers," and he's taking shits on uh, on Will Osprey and all the other people. And this is just at the beginning, just a little. This is October sixth. This is uh, this is just a little bit before All Elite Wrestling Dynamite debuts on TNT and starts rolling ass. By the way, mm-hmm. yeah, but and this nearly. I stress nearly, it didn't fully do it, but it nearly killed The Fiend's whole run right out the gate. If it, it had not been for what happened... Damaged it damaged it, and the only reason why it didn't outright kill The Fiend was because Bray Wyatt was smart enough to do Firefly Funhouses for a while. <laughs> for a while, he only did the one as far as I know. <laughs> no, 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 it, not oh, Firefly no, Funhouses, the, 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 the yeah. vignettes, yeah. Yeah, he did the vignettes, and then... He held out just long enough for WrestleMania the next year and did the Firefly Funhouse match, which was what saved his ass, only for it to turn right around a few months later and they fucked it up again. Oh, 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 extreme oh, rules. Again in Florida. Ah! July 19th, 2020. Braun Strowman versus The Fiend. The Wyatt Swamp I fight. I feel bad for Braun. And, actually, I feel so bad for both. I. I feel bad for both because this was a cinematic fight. Mm-hmm. Look, this this fairness, wasn't even a match. In 2020, cinematic matches were a thing. The Bowling Yard match and the Firefly Funhouse matches, such as they were. And there's arguments on what, if this the Funhouse match was a match. I, I conclude that it is. It is in WWE canon. It is, but that's a shit show, and I will not get into now. Yeah, this was a match, and this was a shit show. Speaking of, mm-hmm. fair play to both. They tried. Yes, they tried. It's Braun and Bray trying to do some storytelling, but this is WWE. This is. One of the reasons why, I, one of the reasons, this is why I'm, I was glad I took that time off last year for, with the WrestleCast. And one of the major reasons why I said, I don't think I'm going to sit down through uh, no crowds wrestling. It was a nice novelty. Most of them got them right. But this is w, this is Vince McMahon with no, control, no, with no crowd to control his, his, his inner demons. And Vince just throwing shit at the wall. Without consequence, other than ratings, mm-hmm. I don't think yeah. he's even throwing shit at this point. I think he was just taking shits. He is the man who once said that you that you have to learn to eat shit and like the taste of it. And also said we don't make we don't make wrestling. We make movies. Should have stopped. Should have stopped at the Funhouse, Vinny. If you make mo- if you make movies, I think the I think the asylum would like a word with you. Hey Vinny, Junior. if you uh, if you make movies, maybe you could make friends with. Oh no, I'm sorry. Weinstein's in prison now. Oh! 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 Don't run. Don't give. Don't give him ideas because he would actively consider that. He would. He don't care. Fuck. Hell, if, Sa- if the Saudi pr- crown prince. Oh, all the it. women. All the women in the Fed. You need to run away now before he Weinstein's. Oh. <laughs> The uh, fact that I got that should scare me. Agreed. Where Run this away. match belongs on the on the tear maker. I don't think it, I don't think it belongs Russo level. I'm no. not like that. This is I, this I think is, it's Herd. This is solid Jim Herd. Uh, yeah. And and I have bad. a feeling that over time it'll still it'll also go down to Kevin Sullivan because it's a yeah. product. It's a product of co- of world consequences at this point. This is a yeah, product it was, of its time, and a lot yeah. of people would say this is Russo tier. It, it it really isn't because there are there were better cinematic matches. This is among the worst, and obviously it belongs in the worst tier for sure. But in hindsight, this is literally last year. A lot of people hate cinematic matches now. This is a contributing factor. I'm surprised Dream versus Adam Cole wasn't uh, wasn't there, but then again, eh. yeah. The cinematic matches to me, I uh, they're a mixed bag. I can't like 
I don't Firefly get it. Fun, no. Firefly Funhouse was okay. I, I think just, the exception I can't get into them. Cool. I can't get into them. It's what, yeah, it, it's that. It's a wrestling with cheat codes, as Adam Blompier would would say. But again, a, ne- a necessary evil, uh, as I called it. Yeah. Boneyard and Firefly Funhouses were cinematic genius uh, geniuses because in the Funhouse mattress was Vince and uh, their crew going buck wild, buck wild in a positive way with Bray Wyatt for a change. And the Boneyard match was Triple H and Jeremy Borash, who was with Matt Hardy during the uh, Broken Matt saga and TN in Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Final yeah. deletion, ultimate deletion, those, those events and matches. Who's behind the camera? Borash. So the fact that Boneyard was so good, there the, here, here's an unsung hero right there, Jeremy Borash. Mm-hmm. I think this was I, the Fed going jumping the shark uh, with with uh, Bray and uh, Strowman, and it didn't get much better in the Fed. In in uh, AEW, they had a few the the uh, Stampede matches, fine. Sting and De- Allen versus uh, Taz uh, versus uh, Team Taz Cage and uh, I believe Starks was the other guy. Yep, Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks, beautiful. You may hate you. You can hate on the style all you want, but the three matches I would say from that era, the AEW, uh, the the AEW, uh, the Starks, uh, Starks Cage, and Sting Darby Allen must watch. Mm-hmm. I and uh, the WrestleMania cinematic matches. I think the the reason that I can't, personally can't get into the cinematic matches, and this is probably a case for many fans who can't get into them. It's it's not the fact that they're cinematic and thus you're wrestling with cheat codes. There's 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 no crowd. You can't feel the excitement anymore. That's, so that's that's endemic. That's endemic of no fans wrestling in, in general. Yeah, and. Again, I can't get into those either. I think, I think, um, I, I, um, I've watched a, one YouTuber who I've watched a lot of for his video game content is, um, Civi11. Um, and one of the things that he's, that he's said a lot is that a lot of developers took the wrong lessons from Half Life. I am, I'm of the opinion that a lot of promoters took the wrong lessons from the final deletion. The yeah. big reason yeah. that was able to work was the ridiculous strength of the characters involved and the fact that you had two people who had basically been doing similar kind of skits with each other for decades by that point. This is the final deletion worked because they knew how silly wrestling is, was, and forever will be, and they went fucking nuts. They went to 11. The whole, you can say that uh, of the whole Broken Matt saga, the Broken Universe thing, all the way up until the uh, the, 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 the last Broken thing that they did with uh, in WWE, even. Maybe not as effective as, as they were. Like, the, I think the ultimate deletion with, uh, if they could, was the ultimate deletion. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll need to get back to and whatever they did with the, the Halloween special, which was just this ridiculous... And fun. Ultimately, um, the stuff the when you stop and think about it, the stuff that that um, Matt Hardy was doing with the broken Matt character was just was if you look if you look at it, if you look at his independent stuff, it was very much an evolution of what he was do- of what he was doing with the Hardy Show and Omega, not Kenny Omega, but the Omega promotion. Yeah. Um. And the two the two of them had do, the two of them had done had done skits and, and the like for years and some and some of the characters that were it that were in the Hardy verse around that time were characters that I had seen on the Hardy sh- on the Hardy show for a while. Um. And because and because of, because of that, it was it was a natural thing. For, it was a natural extension for them to do, but a lot of a lot of um a lot of people who tried who tried to do that. Didn't ha- didn't have that kind of the only people who could really pull that off to have that kind of natural build up, um, were the elite, in ter- in terms of in terms of bringing that kind bringing that kind of uni- universe into into a television thing, and that's why the um the only other cinematic matches I'd say I, there are, 
aside from the aside from the Hardy ones, the only the only there are only three instances of the cinematic match really working. Um, the Boneyard match, the Cena versus Fiend match, which was just a grand tour of all of all of their different gimmicks, and po and poking fun and poking fun at Vince and everybody else at the same time, and um and the state and the stadium stampedes, which were. Which felt which felt like something out of DDT, and if you it, it's it's a it's a schmoz it's it's a schmoz it's comedy and th and that was the reason why that was able to work. But be, but beyond th but beyond that, when you don't have when you don't have that level of character and you try and work a normal ish match, it do it doesn't work. Let's also let's also not forget that this ca that I think the big problem with with say the Wyatt Swamp fight and similar things is that they tried to they tried to book it the in the way that you would book say an empty arena match. The problem the problem is though, if you look at say the Rock and Mankind's empty arena match for instance, there's a whole lot. It's not just the ma it's just not it's not just the match itself. You've got a whole lot of other stuff going on. And a whole lot of sh a whole lot of schmozzing, a whole lot of um, of funny moments. Mm-hmm. I remember. I remember seeing that match. Wanna... But you can't. You're not going to be able to do that kind of comedy with um, Braun Strowman. You can do comedy with him, but it's got but it's got to be of a certain type, like the um, like the mixed max ch the mixed max um, challenge that he they did where he was opposite um, Alexa Bliss in it. And have and having her wear a shirt that's in his size and w and it was more of the shirt wearing her. Yeah. Uh, that and um and the and this was during this was during that time when Braun Strowman was I was on the mode of I'm gonna flip every car I can find, and every <laughs> vehicle I can find, and re and wreck the set with a grappling hook. Um, <laughs> this was this was where we got um. Where, where we where we got Brian Zane doing the um, Braun Strowman song, <laughs> uh, Braun Strowman and uh, the ADCs of wrestling to do it, bringing that up and uh, this is how I got over. You've got you got to be really damn good to be able to make Nickelback not suck. <laughs> <laughs> but and uh, and ironically, this is this is the point where I Nickelback didn't actually suck yet. And the thing, the thing is, with the thing is with the one, one of the reasons that I wanted to, I, I wanted to do this is, one, it's um, it's funny to look, it's funny to look back at bad matches. But two, if I have, I have been on a semi crusade to sit to systematically destroy a lot of people's nostalgia over past eras, because, and you've you probably dealt with this as much as as much as I have, Maddie. I have heard constantly for years about how the Attitude Era was was com was completely great, and the and the mod and the modern era is nothing but garbage. Or you've, Bristol or you've and got the, Patterson in two thousand two. Thank you. Or you've or you've oh, got 2000. some of the you've got some of you've got some of the cult of Cornette people who think that everything after the Territory days is not real wrestling. Um, the I have I have said in my first video on this channel seven years ago. Nostalgia is a sweet poison, and that is a, that is a stance that I have maintained, because you look at that and you look at you you actually look at some of the stuff that was going on on the undercard of Raw during the Attitude Era, or the stuff that was going on in Nitro during that era, and even before that in the '90s, the New Generation era. There were, were there was was there good? Yes, but there's a whole lot of bad that isn't be, that isn't being acknowledged. And if there's one if there's one lesson that I've that I've learned over the years when it comes to being a fan of wrestling, it is learning to take the good with the bad. Agreed. And there are not a lot of people who can do that though, Monk. No, there aren't, but Well to well to them I well to them I say get on my level. <laughs> So, to, to everyone out there who, who consistently and constantly uses nostalgia as an excuse to, to say that everything was better in the, in the bygone days, uh, the general uh, roaring response from the monastery, Get good, scrub! 
Yeah. Pretty He's much. Like, and you, you guys have heard me rant about how about how I've had how I have to deal with that in my area of expertise when it comes to the grogs, and this is and this is this is absolutely no different. Um, in fact, I'm in fact I'm pretty sh I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that my that my um that <clears> my <throat> that my gro that my grog that my grog kind of issues is the re is the reason why a good chunk of the cult of Cornette doesn't care for my presence. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is good which is good for me because I because I don't because I don't care I don't care for I don't care for their I don't care for their presence either because I like to have fun. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and head. I'm dozing over here. Uh, all right, yeah, stay, we gotta wrap it up. Stay for, stay frosty shades. So night. Overall, oddly enough, when it comes to the, here's the thing I find funny when I look when we look at the chart. The there is no win there is no tier winner. It's a two way tie. Vince, but that you that explain that essentially explains how the, the, this pretty much. You know how how could it not be? Uh, how could I explain this accurately at two in the morning when I'm dozing off myself and about to you go to bed and pass out? Um. You can see this two ways. There are some matches that are infamous and are so bad it's good that you need to watch them. And there are some matches that eh, you, you could easily skip and, and, and feel satis somewhat satisfied and, and not satisfying your curiosity. Wrestling is cyclical. And there are moments in time where sometimes you just go through. It's literally you go through the building. Everyone gets paid, everybody works, and everyone gets out. And sometimes you get something that is magical, which is usually what happens, especially in a live crowd. And sometimes you get Rick Root versus Masahiro Chana. <laughs> it happens. It, these things happen. You cannot accurately predict if a match will be good or bad based on, on the car. Ah. All Out, we've, we're filming this literally hour, hours after All Out 2011. Or 2021. That's mm -hmm. how tired I am. You you sent us you, back in which, nine, ten years. <laughs> Could you imagine if that happened though? Uh, I'd be terrified. Thank you. I know, right? But it's a case of sort of the best of wrestling happened at all out tonight, and it even had Mar Paul White versus QT Marshall. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, she doesn't belong on pay per view," and I'm like, "Yeah, but you need matches like that. You need matches to calm people down." Not every card need, needs to be Wrestle Kingdom Nine. Mm -hmm. This is a, some of these matches are simply byproducts of good wrestling, and sometimes wrestlers on an off night, or booking on an off night, or booking on a bad shit high, or on a bad shit crazy, or you know Vince McMahon being Vince McMahon, or Vince Russo being Vince Russo, whatever it is. What this tier shows basically is. You know what? Sometimes not everything's a home run, and that's all right. You don't have your ups and downs and everything. Mm -hmm. You need the lows before you get to the highs. Yep. You have to have the highs and lows to define each other. Shadow cannot be defined yeah. without light, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But and and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure if I. Is it possible that if I look at this chart in a few in a few years, there's get, there's there are going to be worse offenders? Oh yes. Oh, um, the, the, it, it, with, with Vince with the WWE the way it is right now, I would not be shocked. Neither would I. However, it, it, however, I was gonna say if we review this this uh, say five down five years down the road, will we be reviewing something called the worst match ever because it kills the WWE? Much as much as I'd enjoy much as I enjoy that, I have to live in reality. <laughs> you don't think that there's going to be a match so bad it'll kill the WWE? No. No. Oh. Neither do I. Uh... One can know. hope, though. Damn it! Where's my where's sure. my mon where's my monkey's paw? <laughs> oh no! A wish was granted. <laughs> Simpsons reference. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we're all tired. <laughs> but look, here, look, it's been a long night. Look, this is if there if 
if if you take it if you take any if you take any message from this um right now we even th is it is is rest is oh let me take care of that oh, there is, you. Res is wrestling right now as ho as hot as as hot as it was in in a halcyon day no no however you however you have oh you have a vet you have a lot of a lot of um a lot of activity a flurry of activity within the in, within the indies and a lot of promotions actively collabing with each other which is something that we haven't seen at the, at this level since the territory days we pretty much okay. we pretty much have a set a set of territories in the in the indies when it comes to this per, this amount of cross promotion and i would actually have to counter your question of is wrestling as popular as it was in the Halcyon days with um, it's a different game and a different environment. It's it's but, almost apples and oranges but you're looking at sheer numbers yeah you could make the argument that it isn't but I, I would think say the that, word hot is, is, is accurate. Well because we had right a, a, a centralization um at one point, where a, mon a, a monopolization, thanks to the Fed, but yeah. now, but now, especially in the last few years since, again, I'll bring up the the, the event, Russell Kingdom Nine. Now, if Russell Kingdom and Lucha Underground proved that there are viable alternatives, and while the the pandemic did take down a few of those viable uh, alternatives, whether by just the pandemic wrecking economics and the uh, speaking out movement, among other things. Now that we're getting out of that pandemic, if you're a professional wrestling fan, you have New Japan that, uh, when it's allowed to you know perform, still pumps out good wrestling. You, you have Ring of Honor, around. which their pure t championship uh, tournament a while back, and their pure championship matches. Mm-hmm actually weirdly enough benefited from the the lack of a crowd for whatever reason and the presentation that ring of honor that that uh, a modern uh the, the modern graphical context i mean you didn't have the, the those graphics in, in the older days and you didn't have a way to keep track of it now you have sports logic going into it in the sports like presentation so Ring of Honor has that has a pure uh, a pure division that actually could it can work long term. Mm -hmm. That's something exciting if you're into the technical aspect and into jo and, and Jonathan Gresham and the guys who are purely technical. Once Ring of Honor is is able to actually present with crowds and they could put a screen with the with the stats on there. Jonathan Gresham versus Zack Saber Jr. for the P pure championship. Anybody? Yeah. Dream, dream fantasy match, mind you, but mm -hmm. fair enough. Mexico still is still a thing. I mean, Lucha, it, it, CMLL is fucking up, but AAA is around, and they, they have their ind independent scene. Mm -hmm. AEW is around, and WWE for a lack of uh, for better and including worse mm -hmm. is still around and still has GC pound for pound. Well, if if you want if you want something that's a throwback to the. To the old to the old ECW arena, GCW oh, is your guy. GCW, GCW oh, yeah. is hardcore with with some yeah. uh, some extra stuff. That's a fun watch. Mm -hmm. PWG exists, and WWE for better or worse still has pound for pound one of the better rosters. Though they lost three, two significant pieces to AEW this weekend. Yeah. And as we and as we all stated at the beginning of this, uh, the monastery is all elite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now, um, there you go. There's, al there's also the fact that um, the point I'm trying to make eventually is simply it may not be hot, but if you're a wrestling fan, there is reason to be very excited to be a wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be another boom. I can't. I, I, I for all I know, I don't know. But if you're a fan, you're hype. Mm -hmm. True. And there's a there's a lot there's a lot of things going down. That ju that justify said hype. Um, I'd I'd like I'd liken it to I'd liken it to this. At this at this juncture, the re the reasoning to be a mm -hmm. one promotion lifer, or a one or or a one or a one franchise lifer in other mediums, is so is is hanging on like the sword of Damocles on nothing but a horse's it's hair. 
it's one of those things if you are if you have the ability to be a lifer in wwe especially now cherish it before the budget uh, the, the bean counters take your, your your thing out and you know i've taken a shit on nxt and monk i'm surprised we haven't laughed at that nxt logo on the show i don't know if they, you've done so but i i, didn't, I will say i didn't think it would i i didn't think it would fit tonight fair enough I will say this: If you're a WWE uh, a lifelong fan and don't care for all the other shit, one, you poor sods, and two, they just signed the the Olympic gold winner, a uh, gold medal winner that showed up at SummerSlam a couple weeks ago. That could be another current angle. You don't know, but the guy seems excited, and in that performance center, you still have Triple H heading things. Matt Bloom's still a great coach, and some of the finishing coaches include William Regal and Shawn Michaels. The one thing that I will advise any lifer, and this is this is an advice I give I give to um, D and D lifers, do not dismiss um, ev everything outside that bubble. Um, do not dismiss or do not down do not downplay everything in the everything. It's in that unreasonable bubble. to do so because even small shows like MLW have a television presence. And even in the age where a television presence isn't all that it's hyped up to be, you have the internet, mm -hmm. and an inter and and sometimes, especially with AEW, that internet for that television presence means a, a legitimacy and all that stuff. It also means you have a spot to put to, to apply your wares. The the thing, the the big reason why the big reason why I say that is um, when it went for months. How many how many times how many times did we hear AEW is a t-shirt company or or um, or that they, or that they would be or that they would be going under in in a, in a year or um, when they'd or when things like oh, when things like all out double or nothing or the like would sell out in minutes um, how many times did oh, we hear oh oh well, it's a t-shirt company it outsold the Bullet Club t-shirt. <laughs> and in, in, in the seven years the Bullet Club t-shirt was a thing and it still is a thing technically mm -hmm. Punk sold out sold the Bullet Club shirt in mere hours I got, I got and that's one example yeah the the point they the may point be a, they may be that by the same time uh sure sure keep thinking that whatever helps you sleep at night and um, the it's one it's the thing the thing is when you when you try when you try and as as anybody can learn when it comes to the things that make discourse toxic when you dismiss someone else someone else's position or try and or try and delegitimize it it does not do you any favors and if anything it makes you look worse it mm -hmm. makes it makes you look out of touch it makes you look disrespectful that's why I plead to people who, who are lifers, do not di do not dismiss someone else's fandom, because because as the as the saying goes, don't judge a man until you walk a mile in his shoes. Mm. He is just as passionate about about hit about a given promotion as you are. It just happens to be one that you're not. That's the only thing that separates you two. And if you go around acting like your bet like your particular approach is better then you have ceased becoming a fan and you have breached into fandom and we here in the monastery have a, have a mantra of fans not fandom so i'd also like to put one other uh, anecdote forth about not playing down the positions outside your own a lot of the time uh, and this is a generalization, the people who are playing those positions down do so from a feeling that whatever they're consuming is superior. Yes. And we know how that works, don't we? Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when talking about wrestling, the underdog is usually pretty beloved. So, uh, remember, you might like your D&D &D or like your WWE like everybody may have had a favorite in Triple H. 
but our fantasy craft or our AEW may be the Daniel Bryan that takes you down. If we're gonna if we're gonna use that, I'd say be beware of Pinnacle Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think I think that's our closer, Monk. <laughs> yeah, that that will we that ain't will top, be, we ain't topping that one. That will be the wrap up. Um, we got we got some interesting stuff coming coming this week. One tomorrow, unless a meteor strike strikes me <laughs> that strikes me down or some other bullshit happens. I will finally be interviewing John Swayze. Yeah. <laughs> the most snake pit interview I've had in a long time. And it's it's not that it's not that either of us have been trying to dodge it. It's just shit just keeps getting in the way. Murphy's law. <laughs> um Tuesday. The we have the NFL edition of the men who stare at sports ball because we are com- we are coming to the end of the preseason and we will be entering the season proper. So it'll be time to shit on everybody's favorite team. Um, the Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gl- I'm glad I- I'm glad I- I'm glad Akira was drunk tonight. <laughs> I was kind of kind of right. here because because that that joke would have been good. He, oh. it's, you're, it's better that he wasn't. He he was loaded <laughs> at the end. Of the <laughs> he loaded himself so damn good. I um, I wanted to have a couple of beers, but I'm like, I'm glad yeah. I did it now. Um, Wednesday, Todd Crapper is going to be, is going to be coming back to hmm. to um to talk about the screenplay engine because that was one project that we dipped into the last time I had him on, but we didn't have time to fully focus on it because we were focused on Pandora at the time. Um. Also on Wednesday, we have we have the um, part two of our last class warfare episode, tackling adapting Jade Empire styles to um, j- to Brother Joel's Lone Wolf Fist game. Um, Thursday, Burning Star Games will be coming will be coming to the temple to discuss a five um, E campaign setting that's basically Dark Sun in all but name. And congratulations to those guys for getting funded at the time of this recording. Um, mm-hmm. Drink. Cheers. Friday is going to be another doubleheader. First is going to be um, a Marshall a Marshall style exploration with T. Dave Silva adap- adapting adapting some of the um, fighting style experiments from the Crafty Games forums into the martial arts systems in his Metahumans Rising game. Um, and after that, one, one, of the hi- one of the highlights for Zan and myself is going to be the Valley of the Judged, Heavens, and Heresies, where we will be tackling the game's answer to the monk. Yes, 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 yes! Um, um, I, I'm a little excited for Fridays these days, guys. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> especially, especially, especially since we actually get we actually get feedback on this experiment. We have we have first person dialogue with the with the actual developer. That alone is just so exciting for this project. Um, Are you tired? Because I don't think you're tired. <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm just drunk. And fair enough. Sa- and um, set and Saturday, unless uh, unless something doesn't go as planned, I will have um, Lion Wing Publishing. Who is on, on? Who who is the translator for picaresque Roman? Which the best way to describe picaresque Roman? A story game that is taking heavy inspiration from Yakuza and Persona. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of on and of course next week next week will be the ret- will be the return of Geek Watch where we'll have something. S- We'll have something um, special in mind, as we always do here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and, as they say, goodbye, and good night, bang!